Ooh, what's up, Internet? My name's Nerdy. And I'm Claro. And this is The Hero of Ages. Is it though? Mistborn, book three, era one, Cosmere verse. Who knows when it comes in? I don't know. Shard 69. Well done. How long were you waiting to make that joke? I wasn't. It popped in my mind in the moment. Ah. And I'm pretty proud of it. No one has ever made a 69 joke on the internet before. No, and no, that's I a good feel, one. That's a really good I one. feel like I created something new today. You should be proud. Yeah, yeah for sure, for sure. What's up, chat? How How's we doing? everybody doing? Uh, it's good to see everyone. Yeah, I was like, can we get rid of that tab where it's just our faces? Yeah. But like behind. <laughs> I'm like, oh, God. It's the nerdy. It's too large. The wordy. The book club. Hell yeah. We didn't say that part. We did not. But we said it later. So it's fine. That's true. That is how it works. <laughs> if you say it later, it's fine. Yeah. Tell your wife that on her birthday. As long as you say it later to her, it's fine. Better late than never. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I always tell my wife happy birthday like three days after her birthday. Yeah. Just so you know, she doesn't get too cocky. This is the setup I want to go with. Just moving stuff around. Oh my. Okay. What? Too much? No, it's, it's fine. I'm just... Just trying to cover our faces. Yeah. Get rid of... Gross. Don't need to see that. Disgusting. How we doing? How's everybody? It doesn't feel like we were here last week for some reason. It feels like it's been a long time since book club, but I feel like that's just because we were busy. I think it's also just because we didn't have Dragonlance on Saturday, so like our new schedule got messed up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. Um... Bogdan Mechanics says, book club, strap in for a ride today, or strap on. Strap in or on. Whatever you prefer. Strap on to a ride. Wait, this, what? This section is like almost half the book. Yeah. It's like over a third of the book. Yeah. We did uh, We did a big chunk. We did a big chunk. Sorry so. <laughs> to the, our fellow first-time readers uh, yeah. for throwing so much at you, but I understand why the section pickers... Picked this section. Yeah, we appreciate you and everything that you do. Thank you, mods, and uh, friends who assist. I, I feel like it's like kind of a collaborative effort over there. You but know what's funny? Don't go in that channel. I, I don't know how this happens. It just happens. Arzu is like, <laughs> here's your split, and we're like, thank you. Yeah. Arzu messages us at some point and goes, we've decided. And I don't I'm know like, who we is. You know what? appreciate it i kind of it's better I, than it's a mystery i kind of feel like leto atreides being like I, oh i'm running dune now i have to go to arrakis great sure <laughs> sure sure why hopefully we don't all get murdered oh we no we're definitely getting murdered. spoilers for the first yeah, 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 yeah. um dune book that came out uh 60 years seven, i don't know how many years ago many years ago 80 years ago is it that long? No. no. 60, 60, 60. Okay, okay, okay. It's I was like, 1965. Oh my god. Linus, thank you so much for the super duper chat. Sad I can't stay here for the live, but looking Same. forward to the B O D of the happy go lucky book where everything is awesome. Looking forward yeah, to hearing Nerdy right. hear about a certain missed thing in the world building. Don't know what that means, but cool, cool, cool. Nerdy hear about a certain missed thing. We missed something. Is that missed or like missed? Like a play on words? Well, they spelled it M-I-S-S-E-D, and you are not the dyslexic one, so. No, but I'm saying, like, that could be a funny joke somewhere in there. Like, that joke could exist if someone made the effort to, uh, to, 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 to do that. Anyways, uh. I don't, I don't, I'm down for dessert power. Official ACM, I'm with, a, yeah, I'm with you. Who needs dessert, dessert power? power? No, dessert power, always. Fuck desert power. I want dessert power. Yeah, give me cheesecake. Or Does give he me know? Death. I don't know. Uh, Brian Needy, thank you for the super chat. <gasps> thank Lego you, Brian. Music, <laughs> music. Everything isn't awesome. Hey. Everything isn't cool when you've unleashed something scary. <laughs> Everything isn't awesome when God is ruining everything. Yeah. Fucking... One of the gods. One of the gods. Yeah, God, man. What a what a dick. This I is mean, why you should only have one. That's he's like he's basically Satan and God. Like that's kind of like what this is. Yeah. Ba this is why you should only have one God. He says trying to trick all the Indians. What? <laughs> they're like, no, no, actually. Actually, no, maybe they're right. Maybe like just a bunch of gods. Have have so many gods that they work like a checks and balances, right? That's what Because you have is. like, you've got, 
so many so many of the like polytheic religions have like you know like a main dude right mm-hmm. it's always a dude because you know but there's like the main dude there's zeus and then he's like the president of the united states of he's the world he's the president of god or according to rick Riordan, just the united states because everything is, happens in america because that is the the center of western culture <laughs> Which I just fundamentally don't agree with. I find it's it the very center funny. of Western military power, and that's a. You know what? True. True. You know what I mean? Zeus. I think I think Zeus is more enamored military by power. military power than he is by culture itself. But that um, wouldn't surprise me. Would not surprise me at all. So, so you have like the Zeus, and then all the other gods are like the checks and balances to keep Zeus in check, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. To make sure he's not doing bad shit. Not really. They all do bad shit. They all do bad shit. So, but most of the bad shit they system. do is like have Guys. sex with too many hot women. <laughs> Zeus's main crime is just fucking too many babes. Yeah, that's his main crime. Oh yeah, he's it's out. Not he's the out there like murder or banging, like war. banging too many sexy ladies. God damn it! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just crime, being too hot. He's, too he's hot, too horny. Too to hot, goddamn. Call the police. You, when when Zeus shows up, you call the police and the fireman. You, yeah. you know what I mean? You just you can't have just one. Which is I don't know, who's the god of fire? Hephaestus? The forge? I actually don't know. I don't think there's a god well, I, no, I no, think No, there's a, definitely Apollos, there's a god of fucking fire. The god everything. of the sun, which I think is would be tied in with fire. I'm pretty sure in Greek mythology, Poseidon's the god of toenails, so I think they have a god of fire, you know what I mean? Of toenails? Yeah. Uh, well, we're talking about the wrong book. Uh, Iris, thank you for five. Iris, thank you for five gifted, gifted membos. Memberships. Let's freaking go. Before we get into anything else, we got to say thank you to Arzu for so many things. Uh, truly, truly. Uh, Arzu usually is the one who coordinates our audiobook reactions, but we're not doing audiobook reactions to this book, and I know why. Yeah, we I think, solved it. We think we figured it out. I figured it out, chat. Mm-hmm. It was mm-hmm. very obvious, in my opinion. Well, because because I was like, I was like, what possible reason could there be that we couldn't do any chapters mm-hmm. in the that is one hundred percent it yeah 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 and so by not being spoiled we kind of got spoiled in a way I don't think it, I don't think I were spoiled no 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 not I spoiled. think I would have come it's to the same funny. conclusions about the epigraphs regardless. I don't, I'm not sure if I would have because I don't think, I, I don't know if I would have been looking for the clues, but then I went looking for the clues. But, but I still, I, but even, okay, so, so here's, I, this is what my theory is that mm-hmm. I will postulate to you now. Mm-hmm. The reason we cannot listen to the audiobooks is because the epigraphs are read in first person from a character who we know's perspective. Yeah. And it would with be a, too obvious what his accent yes, is. Yes, with a very distinguishable voice. Thank now, you, Michael Kramer. <laughs> this led me to be like, okay. Let's solve who the, who wrote the epigraph, right? Uh-huh, because uh-huh. it's clearly one of our main characters. Yes. Because it, they talk about, we went to, there, there's a few things. Yeah. We went to the Well of Ascension. Which means it could be Vin or Ellen, Sezed. Marsh. Marsh. Or, or Ham. Ham. They were the five people that were there that night. Yes. Right? Yeah. So then the, the, the five people that were there that night, uh, I just genuinely from the bottom of my butthole do not believe that it could be ham yeah don't think it's ham it just doesn't make sense yeah yeah it just doesn't make sense for it to be ham whatsoever so we knocked him off immediately yeah yeah marsh Marsh is is mentioned and so is ellen yes so marsh is named so marsh done for yeah ellen done for can't can't be ellen also it would be so fuck like i don't believe that Brandon Sanderson would make the boring choice of having the like typical white lead guy become the hero in the third book. Yeah, I just think it, I think seems... for this novel series. Yeah, he seems like he seems too smart to fall into that like trope. Like he's like I can do something more interesting with this, you know? Yes. Um, and we don't think it's Vin. Um, Connor Crane says Lesty B was there too. Lesty B was left outside. Yeah, he didn't really come in. He, he didn't, didn't go see in. the smoke. He didn't see the yeah. middle, like, it, yeah, yes, but so then, so then we don't we, think it's him. So then we get to the the two people. Actually, before we say that, I, I originally had Ten Soon in that argument as well until the we went to the Well of Ascension. I thought before that line, and I think it was like chapter eight. You thought it might have been. I thought Tensoon. it was one. I I thought it was either Marsh Ten Soon or um. I, cons- said, I considered Tensoon I thought it was well. a someone with power, but not yeah. So then we get to the we get to the the problem. Is it Seizes or is it Vin? Right, 
And the reason why it has to be Seized mm -hmm. is twofold. The first reason is because I just really don't see Vin writing a book. No, no, not, not even a little like, bit. Like, I just don't see, I just, it, like, it would be very odd to me if yeah. at the end of this book it was, like, the, the diary of Vin Venture. You know, I just, I don't buy yes. that. Yes, yes. No, we have seen her, like, get into researching a little bit, but it doesn't seem like the thing she would be driven to do. Only it because also, she has to. Yeah. Once, once, this, once, this, once this problem is done, I don't know that Vin reads ever again. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I think, like, Vin is like, fuck, I have to Ellen read. reads her bedtime stories. Yeah yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But the other reason is because every time that Ellen is mentioned is they say Ellen Venture. Not true. I actually went and I checked because I was curious. They say both interchangeably. Okay. Enough times. Enough times. They say Ellen Venture. Yes. And also, there's a few times where Vin never qualifies her gut feelings as, like, Oh, my opinion, I think, I yeah, believe. Yeah. Whereas Seyzed absolutely does, and it's done several times throughout these uh, ep epigraphs. Yeah, it's definitely Seyzed. Seyzed is the hero of ages. We're just waiting to find out why. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. The one thing that's weird about it, though, the one thing that doesn't add up is that it does say when I held the power, which means that at some point in this book, Seyzed is going to wield the power at the Well of Ascension, if our theory is correct. Yeah, he has to. Yeah, because I don't know how in they're order, gonna fix everything. In, yeah, yeah, that 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 is not that's that's not an argument against what we're saying, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. what happens later on in the book. <laughs> it, well, here's the thing: like, it seems like it takes a long time for the power to come back. And they have so... no. That's just something they're assuming. They have no fucking clue what was in the well for the thousand years. They're like, oh, it took a thousand years for the well to fill back up, and I'm like. No, I don't I, I know don't, why you're you you you're just making that assumption. I don't think that they thought it took a thousand years. I just think that we know it takes. Some they, they time. said they say in sorry they say in the book that they think that it takes a thousand years for it to fill up again. Do they? Okay, yes. I definitely missed that. Yeah, there's a point where they're like, oh well, the, because the well's not gonna be filled up for another thousand years, so we 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 have to do something else right now. Mm -hmm. And you think there's another well? Um, I was confused at, at that point in the reading, but now I'm not. Okay. Because I, I hadn't gotten to the point yet where they described that the well held the power of preservation. Um, and so at the, there was a point where I was like, oh, they went into the well of ruin and now they need to go into the well of preservation and like yeah. to like balance it. Yeah. And then I got to later in the reading where they're like, when I went into the, when they, when Vin, it's one of the epigraphs where Seyzed says, I'm telling you it's Seyzed. <laughs> uh, Watch us be so wrong. No, we're not. We, we literally can't be. I don't think it would make sense for it to be anybody else. Mm hmm um, it also explains why Ruin would change the prophecies to not fit a Terrisman and thus create the friction between Rashek and Elendi, mm -hmm. right? Ruin knew, Ruin must have known that there was power in making a Terrisman hate the Hero of Ages so much by having it be someone who is the oppressor of the Terrisman. Yeah. But yeah. the Hero of Ages was always actually meant to be a Terrisman. Yeah. Right? I think there's so much power in like the, that idea that Absolutely. I might have come up with but I think Brandon Sanderson came up with it and he's leading me by the nose right to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um yeah. what was I saying? Oh yeah, there was a point where I thought there were two else, but then mm -hmm. there is a epigraph where they're like when Vin went into the power preservation or whatever. Um Yeah, I'm pretty sure they do mention it is the power preservation which Yeah. It seems like in these ep epigraphs they have like foreknowledge. Mm -hmm. of like this entire book um because you know it says like the world broke and fall apart and i'm like oh god okay yeah it's wheel of time again <laughs> it's uh, <the> breaking <laughs> dream shake junior says uh arzu sorry if this has been covered but is the reading order posted arzu's already replied um saying we're going little by little i i would like to point out um not only is the reading order not posted I don't even know what book we're reading after this one. No honest. idea. No idea. What we, I know what like we're reading for the next month, and then like I'm just assuming somebody's gonna tell me. Yeah. Which one was published after this one? No idea. Cool. We I own Warbreaker. Can we just do Warbreaker because we already own the book? Could you imagine um, Warbreaker is like the end? It's the like, last one. It's the last one. I think it was blue. Are we? Who sent are we planning? Okay. Before we get into it today, mm -hmm. so we're already into it. We're 15 minutes in. Oh, by the way, this podcast is brought to you by MistyMountainGaming.com. What? MistyMountainGaming.com is the partner of the channel. Uh, they uh, provide us with the accoutrement necessary for our TTRPG experiences, including the upcoming Wheel of Time Secrets of the Tectonicum 
uh, actual play series that we will eventually do pre-production <laughs> Uh, that we're planning on doing in It'll happen late this, summer, this year. fall, this year, sometime. Yes. Stay um, tuned. So yeah, check. Wait, wait for wait for that. Yes. We are going to be doing the Secrets of the Tectonicum still. Mm-hmm. Um, Is that the breaking? The Wheel of Time, Secrets of the. No, Tectonicum. sorry, not the, the Tectonicum. Secrets of the uh, Secrets of the Trollic Wars. Trollic Wars. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that's yes, where yes, I yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, are we like no, melding no, the Wheel no, of no, Time no, no, world? No, no, no. Interesting choice. But... Echoes of the Tectonicum was our uh, our role play really one. Yes, I'm yes. so sorry. Yes. That, secrets of the Trollic Wars. That one is on me. It. The Secrets of the Trollic Wars is coming on um, mm-hmm. in the fall. In the fall, or, or late summer, early fall. Uh, Chloe, thank you for joining the Nargs of the Nerd Table. Welcome to the Nerd Table. Uh, but yeah, go to MaceMangaGaming.com and use code NerdyNightly15 for 15% off your order. They make the best dice. The they best. They make the accoutrement. You just like that word. I, I it's like penultimate. feel like I have made accoutrement. No, but I only say it in relation to MaceMangaGaming.com. Yeah, I know. And I feel like... Someone who listens to it would think that that's their slogan with how much I use it. No. No, it's no. just something I just made, made up. Just made that shit up. And uh, MaceMailGaming.com, if you want that, you can buy it from me, okay? <laughs> I own that shit. I own the word accoutrement. Wow, how do you own a word? That's really cool. I don't know, but like, um, Kim Kardashian keeps trying. Do you remember when she tried to trademark That's Hot? No. And the American government was like, you, no, but you can't trademark That's Hot. No, I had no it's idea too that, generic. that was a thing. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, there you go. Go buy some fucking dice. Oh, or you just <laughs> message me the next reading order. Oh, Oh, plus. so, but here's the question. Are we doing another Cosmer book right away, or are we taking a one-book break to do... To do an expanse book. An expanse book. book. Oh, fascinating. Okay, okay. The next chunks you can use to switch... Okay. Okay. Okay, so this is insane. So apparently this is what this is the this is the reading order we're gonna do. Week one, we're gonna do Elantris part one, and then week two we're gonna do Elantris part two and three. Then week three, we're gonna read The Emperor's Soul in Arcanum Unbound. Then week four we're gonna read Essay on Cell and Hope of Elantris in Arcanum Unbound and Cell Planet Recap. Then we're not gonna read the rest of Arcanum Unbounded yet. Then week one, the following week we'll then do we're doing Warbreaker. Warbreaker. Okay. Okay. Got it. All right. Well, that sounds fucking insane. Great, great. I, you know what? I love that for us. Thank you, Arzu. Uh, Delans and Delans and Attila. Thank you for kisses from Brazil. Hello from Canada. <laughs> okay. Uh, and Bryce, cool. like that author who tried to trademark cocky. Yeah. Yeah. Trademark. Yeah. Why don't do shit like that? You That's can dumb. trademark individual words within like a logo and company design. Like, um, like Apple owns the word Apple in terms of technology, right? So, like, I can't start and like Apple phones. Yeah, yeah. So, you like, can't you make can't trademark words monitor, within that. You like... just can't trademark it within like the general public. That's so wild. Or maybe you can trademark it, but you can't copyright it. There's there there is a. It, it is the weird reason between, it is the weird line between trademark and copyright that always gets fuzzy. Mm-hmm. It's the thing that She-Hulk did that fucking drove me crazy um, in that one episode with uh, Titania's makeup line where I was like, this legal, this legal argument does Doesn't. not make any fucking yeah. sense whatsoever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a bit uh, bonkers. But then the, the, but then the writers of She-Hulk came out and were like, we don't understand legal shit. So that's why, it, and I was like, I mean, balls of you to just say that you know you're wrong. <laughs> Yeah. No, you, you made it very clear. Uh, Why are there good courtroom scenes of the show? We didn't know how to write them. I was like, that's, that is the craziest thing to admit. Just bring someone up. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Anyways. That's our theory about uh, why we're not allowed to do the audiobook reactions and who we think the Hero of Ages is. Because Say Zed is the Hero of Ages. Fun. I love that for us. Say Zed is the Hero of Ages. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, that's... I figured it out. We're, we're, we're or at least when at, that at least at the point when he writes the epigraphs that we are currently reading, mm-hmm. he believes he is. It might still not be, but I do think it. I do think he will be because throughout this section, uh, and in the second last chapter when Vin introduces her, like, because here here's my favorite thing about the ball scene is that Vin was my like, favorite. "Yo, they're gonna introduce me, 
I'm going to write down Hero of Ages. Even though I don't know that that means anything to anybody in, like, Fadrex. I so they, the they're no... like, who the fuck is the Hero of Ages? I think the nobility maybe know, but yeah. she. I, for some people, she just started calling herself Hero of Ages, and they're like, all Didn't right. Didn't they pull the Hero of Ages word out of the logbook, though? They might have. Oh, Kayla, welcome to the nerd table. Thanks, Thanks for, for joining. Thanks for joining. Um, yeah, I, you I know don't what? remember. I don't remember where Hero of Ages comes from. If it was like a cultural thing that like they called the Lord Ruler, or if they they got the Hero of Ages, because I was under the impression they got Hero of Ages from the logbook. Right. So, um, yeah, I just thought it was very funny that she was like, "I am Vin Venture." Em <laughs> Empress of the New Empire and the Hero of Ages. And there's just a bunch of people being like... Yeah, and everyone's like... The hero of... Who, 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 the hero, all right. Okay. A that little sounds, up her own ass, but sure. That sounds fancy. Yeah, I'll, okay. I'll take it. All right. Let's get into it. The Breaker of Chains. <laughs> Keeper of the Blackboard. Pretty much. She was like... I, she she read Game of Thrones and was like, God damn it, Daenerys has so many titles. Yeah, I need, I need a couple more. I need like... Yeah few more for my collection um we, slayer uh, of Rashek. yeah we get to the prologue of this book let's we... talk hero of ages uh before we do clars uh coming out of book two mm -hmm. how are you feeling about book three so far are you enjoying it great love it yeah i love these books yeah me too i think that this one is uh off to a great start yes. i i really am liking the character dynamics they've chosen mm -hmm. uh the, the you know the crew is very split up at the moment and mm -hmm. split up for most of this first section and I think that the way in which the decisions on who is with who and how that's bringing out different elements of their characters has been really fascinating. Yes. Uh, the breeze Cez relationship, I think, has been really wonderful. I yeah. think it makes... Because there's not a lot going on in their storyline. They're just kind of, like, getting places. Uh, and they're, like, at the beginning of a tale in Urtri. Mm -hmm. um, Urto, or I don't know how to fucking pronounce that word. Um, but I, I think that their, their dynamic is making it very interesting. Yeah, a yeah. thousand percent. I, I, yeah, I love that our like normal pairings are kind of all like shaken up a bit, right? We our our characters have like yeah. different foils that are with them now. You know, Ham is with Set, right? Yeah, um, and Set literally, they, Which... Ham was like, "Oh, Set, you can't go anywhere unless someone carries you, right?" So let me so let me you like... with the Sophie. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not gonna lie. That that line was funny in a way that also made me uncomfortable. Made me uncomfy. Yeah, it's like mm -hmm. eh, I don't know yeah. if. Sure. You know what? Sure. Uh, tell me. Yeah, hey, you can't to the walk, right? Well, yeah. Then you're stuck with me. Is a very is an interesting point of view. It is. Yeah. Uh, Tamains. Thank you for being an arg. Tamains. I'm. I'm so happy you survived. I mean, <laughs> I am not happy you survived, but I'm so happy you survived. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Lots of fake out deaths, uh, but it's okay. We're glad you're here. Uh, we, we cannot, we cannot go one show without spoiling the wheel of time. Talking about the, no more wheel of time talk on the show ever again. No more. We, Everyone we, with wheel of time names is like. We shan't spoil the wheel of time. Um, all right, the prologue. Uh, uh, Marsh uh, is 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 fucked. Is we learn how hemallergy bad works. Place. Yeah. Well, we kind of learn like throughout. We're, we're giving little tidbits throughout because at first in this like prologue I was confused, um, but things were up for me very fast. Just I like didn't understand the like that people got their powers by like the metal going through another body into their body like that. I like I understood it was like blood magic, but oh, interesting. I thought that was I I, th I that made sense to me because of the um, body that they found in book one. When that they thought was Marsh's, uh, and I was like, "Oh, they yeah. are, they're, cl yeah, yeah." I no, it totally makes sense, mm -hmm. but uh, I didn't catch on. Uh, Matthew, welcome as well to the nerd table. What's up, Matthew? Hello. Uh, yeah. So the 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 thing is messed up. So here's basically what goes yeah. on: Marsh is not in control at all of himself, which we kind of we kind of figured. Yeah. Given the uh, way the last book ended yeah when he is it like, seemed like marsh did a 180 yeah pretty hard. he's at the well and he's like oh so he said no like i really don't want to hurt you but like i don't have a choice i was like well okay that's not marsh that's got to be mm -hmm. an outside influence which uh it is um so oh this is this is one thing so i thought that i had spoiled myself a little bit 
uh, in that before I started the reading, while putting together my PowerPoint presentation for last week, mm -hmm. I had stumbled across the word ruin and that like the God, was, that, that it was, that the ruin was like the bad guy of this book. Uh -huh. And I was, I, I got spoiled on that and I didn't bring it up last week because I didn't want to like spoil you and I just, yeah, yeah, but yeah, I was yeah. like, fuck man, if the word ruin is like this big reveal in Hero of Ages, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do. I'm going to be so disappointed if, like, I accidentally spoiled myself on Twitter. Yeah, no, you're fine. And then in, like, the opening page or the second page, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Marsh is like, his name is Ruin. And I was like, like, oh, oh, thank God. Okay, good. We're fine. Yeah. Oh, this was yeah. a spoiler that meant fucking nothing. Yeah. I was so, 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 so deeply grateful that I didn't, like... That it didn't matter. Fuck something up. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Jeffrey T, thank you so much for that super chat. Thank you, Jeffrey. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Y'all are so lovely today. Thank you. So Marsh is being controlled by Ruin. Mm -hmm. Shin, thank you for gifting that Mambi she. Shin, thank you. Let's go. <laughs> Ember says, yeah, God really ruined Zayn's orgasms, huh? God damn it. <laughs> Ruins OnlyFans page is wild. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, you know what? That's, that's not my kind of content, but like power to you. you no know? good orgasms over there. Um, but uh, t from that joke, we go to Marsh is currently attempting to kill himself, uh, but can't pull it off because can't Ruin won't out. let him. The spike. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's trying to pull out his own spike. Uh, uh, and uh, his Ruin just... game is weak. This is such um, a dark thing to joke about. Yeah, but that's he, why we're joking about Ruin it. Ruin literally won't let him tug himself. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, that's tragic. I'm so sorry, Marsh. I can't imagine what it's like to live that <laughs> what way. What is wrong with us? Um... <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, he drives a brass spike into the heart of the terraceman before him. And... Um, we learned a little bit about hemallergy. Yeah. Very cool. Yep. Stabbing people. Part one, legacy of the survivor. I am, unfortunately, the hero of ages. What a way to start the book. I know. This is another reason why I don't think it's Vin is because Vin is all like tits out. I'm the fucking hero of ages. Fuck you. Fuck you. Oh, are you related to Chandelarial? I fucking murdered her. I murdered her. Meanwhile, Seizad's like, ah, oh, fuck. I love killing Alarials, you know what I mean? Um, I am the hero of ages, I think, and, uh, god damn it. This Why is did inconvenient. It have to be me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we open up in a small town with some random people. Small uh, town. It's a quiet village. <laughs> Every day. The Kolots are coming. Starving like before. Because the mist. <laughs> Come and kill our people. Oh, God. <laughs> Every single day. And so, um, yeah, uh, Connor Crane says, yay, a third magic system. It's so fascinating because it is a third magic system and it also isn't. Yeah. Because it really is one magic system. And when we get With into... three parts. When we get into the epigraphs at the end of the reading this week, I really love the... Um, Allomancy is the magic of preservation. Preservation, yeah. yeah. Uh, Hemallergy is of ruin. Of ruin. And then Barakemi, I feel like, is it's like the neutral. middle. Yeah. Because Allomancy is the creation of something with yeah. power, right? Yeah. The powers that shouldn't exist come from, like, obviously, like, the amount of strength that you get from pewter shouldn't work. Like, it doesn't really make sense. So it has to be something that is gained. Yeah. Uh, metallurgy is... Uh, metallurgy. Sorry, uh, hemallergy yeah. is diminishing returns, mm -hmm. right? You lose every time you do it. Yeah. And then ferrochemy, you have to provide and you get back. Yeah, there's no, like, loss yeah. in that preservation process. And so it's just, uh, it, it is interesting that it is a, it is three different kinds of powers, mm -hmm. but I feel like they come under the same magic system because the loss of hemallergy makes up for the gain of allomancy in a way, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so the, the, the balance of the magic system is tipped in neither direction. Probably more tipped towards allomancy just because more people use allomancy casually, but yeah, especially with like how the soothers and rioters use it. But there is a balance to the magic system that is like... It's very cool. I don't know why I'm doing this with my hands. Everything is awesome. Um, uh, it's it's really cool. I yeah. I, I I actually really like having a third thing to balance it out. Uh, Johnny Coleman, thank you for the super chat. Penetration makes you a superhero. 
as Peter Parker learned at the young age of 16. <laughs> what? That spider bit into him. He was penetrated. Yeah, yeah. Marsh was also penetrated. Batman's mom was penetrated by a bullet, and then he became Batman. <laughs> Okay. Aquaman's dad penetrated Aquaman's mom, and then he was born to be a superhero. Guys, if you want to be a superhero, it all starts with penetration. I mean, all life starts with penetration. <laughs> even if even if you're like doing IVF, you're still sticking something up there. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, fair. That is totally fair. Which is now once again legal in Alabama because Alabama. Oh boy, that should be that should be the slogan. When you're driving into Alabama, it should Alabama. just say Alabama. Oh boy. Oh boy. Because if you're a woman, your rights are diminished. But, um, but, but, if you're a single cell, you have the rights of a baby. So, yeah, that fucking makes yeah. sense. Once you're born, you lose your rights. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but when, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, when, when you're a fetus, um, you've got all the rights in the world. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, love that for those fetuses. <laughs> Sorry if anyone feels triggered by us making fun of Alabama. But that's where my mom's You're from, allowed. so I'm allowed. Yeah. You're allowed. You know what? As as a second, as a as a as a son of a woman born in Birmingham, You're allowed. I'm allowed to make fun of the ridiculousness of that Supreme Court Absolutely. decision. Absolutely. Uh, Zebus, Zibus, welcome to the nerd table. Have you heard of a collection of unmitigated pedantry? A military historian discussed things like the siege of Minas Tirith. I think you'd enjoy. I think I would as well. Uh, yeah. No, I've never heard of that. That's sick. That's I mean, I have strong feelings about Minas Tirith in general, but, yeah. You have strong feelings in general? No, never. Yeah, yeah. Never. Yeah. I am right down the middle on Attack on Titan. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Fatrin is the leader of this small town in the middle of fucking nowhere. And uh, he's on the wall, and he's like, I got 2,000 troops. They're mostly dudes who have swung a sword every morning for a year but they're troops yeah. we're gonna be fine we can fight shit we're gonna be just great i probably should have mined more shit so that i could bribe people oh shit there's a dude coming and then ellen rides up and he's like yo what the f and then ellen just casually uses his alamancy to boop up under the wall yeah and he's like what's up motherfucker i'm hey. the emperor yeah hey howdy can you let my horse in thank you very much appreciate it all right I, hop to i am emperor ellen you work for me now Let's go for a walk. And Fats is like, I, uh, uh, yeah, I guess I do. Sure, yeah. fine. You know what? All right. I believe you because you said it real good. Also, you're misborn. There's not a lot that I can do. Yes. And so Ellen is like, hey, uh, there's a Coloss army coming. You guys want to go, um, you want to go fight some Coloss? And the people are like, oh, yeah, fuck it. And honestly, like, there was a, you, you guys know me. You know me. I'm a big, like, why would, you, we just watched Shogun episode one. Mm. No, Blue-Eyed Samurai. Oh, okay. We watched Blue-Eyed Samurai. No. <laughs> um, no, I was thinking about the walls. And ah. they're, 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 if you watch our reaction to the finale of Blue-Eyed Samurai, which isn't up on YouTube yet, but will be soon, there is a period of that reaction where I'm like, why would you stand in front of your walls? And I'm a big, like, walls and ditches guy. We know this. Going back all the way to Wheel of Time, season one, episode eight, right? Yeah. If you build a wall, you put a ditch in front of it, and you build a defensive perimeter. And so when Ellen is like, we got to ditch our defensive perimeter... I'm usually the guy that's like, that's dumb. Don't give up your advantage. Yeah. But here, it, this is maybe the one time where it's a really good idea. Mm -hmm. And it's when the opponent's army is exhausted from marching all day. Yeah. And, and they haven't like frenzied themselves, which is like <coughs> a thing. Yeah. No, it is, right? Because <laughs> I think that like the, the Coloss really have a hard time working together when they're not in that frenzy. When they're not yeah. they directing their energy at one thing. Yeah. And so this is like that one time where Ellen's plan, it, the, leaving the safety of your walls, yeah. makes sense. Yeah. And, and he's like, God, I hope Vin shows up. Yeah. Uh, not that he needs Vin, because apparently he's the most powerful special boy to ever be a powerful <laughs> special boy. But He's just originally powerful. <laughs> he's originally powerful. That's why he's very strong. Uh, and also the wall is shit. Yeah, the wall, the wall, the wall not being great doesn't help. But it's short. Yeah, they, yeah, the Coloss would get over it without too much trouble for sure. And so they charge. They leave the power of the wall, and uh, they go fucking attack, and it works. The Coloss are taken by surprise. Yeah. Ellen is they kill doing like five hundred of them. Some crazy ass Alamancy shit. Yeah. Because it's been. 
I'm not going to lie. It's been a year. I've lost the plot on the timeline because there's a lot of year, there's a lot of different timelines they throw out and they're hard to keep track of because sometimes they're like, that was four years ago and that was five years ago and that was three years ago. And I'm like, I thought all of those events were like the same time, but I guess there was like a year in between them. I, I, yeah, I agree. I, it, there's always a year between each book, but it's been five years since book one. Because the siege of Luthadel took for fucking ever. Yeah. It just doesn't seem like there should be five years since they found Vin, but there has been. Because it's like, so so they find Vin, right? And then I think there's like six months of training. And then she pretends to be Valette for like uh, three months, mm. right? And then there's a, then they kill the Lord Ruler. Then there's a year gap. Then there's the siege of Luthadel. Which definitely takes some time. It just doesn't, I, I, when they said five years, I was like, I don't know how there's five years. I think, I thought there was like three years so far. Yeah, it definitely was more than I thought, but I was like, okay. No, it would be four. It would be four. Cause like if the first book takes place over like nine months, mm-hmm. um, hmm. Yeah. I, I, the, when they said five years, I'm not going to lie. My brain kind of went Five years? Where? I guess so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, some of the timelines in in within the books are less clear. Mm-hmm. Whereas it's been, like, a year between each book, which I'm like, okay, that makes sense to me. The, the Siege of Luthadel c- c- can't have been a full year, right? And I think that, I, I think that the books, yeah. It's definitely got to be, like... At least six months. Well, I don't is there? Know. Does anyone have a spoiler-free timeline? Yeah, yeah, that that would be helpful. Um, one, book one was a year, and then a year gap, and then six months siege, then a year gap, so three and a half years total. Yeah, but then they say in this book it's been like like it's Vin been... is like Vin is like oh that was five years ago because she's twenty one now it's and she been... was sixteen. Yeah. Does she turn 18 in the first book? No, she turns 18 in the second book, yeah, right? Yeah, She's, like, just turned 18, basically, I think. So I guess that means the first book has to take place over two years? No, Chloe, she says she's 21 in this book. Yeah, she's 21 in this yeah. book. She, she, Vin says And they it, say so. that it's been five years since they found her when she was 16. Yeah. Yeah, like, she specifically says that. So, yeah. Interesting. Unless she doesn't know her own birthday. <laughs> yeah, I the, the timeline doesn't really make sense to me. It doesn't seem like it could have been five years. It, yeah. Since they found her. Yeah. I was very much like, okay, if you say so. <laughs> How long is the time jump while she's training? Is it a year? While she's training with Kelsier? Yeah. Yes. Is it a full year? Yes. For them to like do Kelsier's plan. Right, she was 16, and then, like, a month later, she turned 17. She, like, had her birthday right at the, kind of the beginning of the first book. Right, so she turned 17 in the training. Four years and a bit, maybe. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Chad. We got there, we got there, we got there. Yeah, that's Um, fine. So then uh, we cut over to chapter two. (laughs) Ten soon. I'm so glad Tensoon is back, guys. These Remember when we were like, I don't know if he's going to be back in the books? I know, but these might be my favorite chapters. Really? I I really love this character, and I find the Chandra <coughs> fascinating. So yeah, I agree. I, like, I've just been eating this shit up. Mm-hmm. Um, very, very into it. I, I think it's so cool. I think it's so creative. Like, I just, yeah, I love everything about it. We learned so much about the Chandra mm-hmm. um, in his sections. Um, he's been in prison for a year. Johnny Coleman, thank you for that super chat. Thank you so much. Is it your 12 months on every planet? If you... Maybe. Okay, okay, okay. Here is here is my thing. Fantasy writers. Mm-hmm. If you use the word year, that's 12 months, 365 days. Unless you explicitly tell me otherwise. Yeah. But, and this is what drives me fucking crazy about Game of Thrones, is that Game of Thrones... Ta- uses language that doesn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> yeah. Because in like book four, he finally explains what a week is. And you're like, oh, that would have been good to know like 
forever a fucking go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I, I thought that so fucking Daenerys was fourteen years old in real world time, but she's only fourteen in the in fucking Westeros. But in real world years, she's like nineteen years old because the the years are shorter. It's nonsense yeah. and also it's like like the seasons are not based on like a year yeah because it, yeah so it's it, yeah very confusing i think if you're gonna set up a different kind of calendar you have to establish that right away yes because it makes things confusing later on Which so is, i'm going to assume yes that there's 12 months on this planet like fucking like Baldur's gate 3 does such a good job of this and weirdly because it's not important to Baldur's gate 3 at all but they never say it's been a week they say it's been a 10 day. Mm -hmm. And so they literally have a term for how time passes in their world yeah. because it is different than ours. They don't just use the words from our world, but then be like, oh no, but that's not what it means. And I'm yeah, like, that yeah. doesn't help me fucking at all. Yeah, that yeah. as a reader is very frustrating, especially the authors that don't even fucking explain it in the book, only explain it in like a fucking interview. And so the yeah. people are like, oh no, like I'm a real fan. I watched the interview. So I know that a week in this world is actually nine and a half days. And every nine days there's a half day afterwards it's never brought up in the books but the author said it and i'm like then it's then it's not real if the author said an interview and it's not in the book it doesn't exist yeah that's like their own headcanon yeah. which like should be real because they're the author but if they didn't put it in the book then i still count it as headcanon yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> like land fear no i can't i can't we're not spoiling wheel of time doesn't matter um <laughs> We're moving on. Land fear. Uh, Who's wow. she? Nice uh, shirt you got there. I know it's so soft. Sexy, sexy. Our shirt. fourth wall merch is so okay. much better than our old merch. I know. We used to have mediocre merch, y'all, and I'm sorry, I didn't know better. And then we then we moved to fourth wall, and like honestly, it's pretty great. Our merch now is I wear I wear more of our merch than other clothes because our shirts are so comfortable. Yeah, they're they're actually great. They're we're not great we're not just saying that to like sell them. Like you wear them all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're very comfy. And you're very picky. I am autistic. <laughs> so textures are a big part of my life. They absolutely matter. Yeah, I can't, uh, uh, I cannot do any sort of corduroy. I, it, it is, I, it really kills me. That's fair. I love yeah. corduroy. Yeah. Um, Ten Soon has been in prison for a year. He's like a blob, squishy into a cell that he can't get through because it's got like mesh on it and he can't like... Which honestly sounds awesome. What do you mean? Oh my God. To be a blob and just fit into a space that's perfectly made for my size. It's not though. He's like crammed in there. Oh, I just love the idea of just being a blob. I mean, that's just fair. Just chilling. That, like that is, that is fair. You know... I, I'm not going to lie, <laughs> other <laughs> other than the fact that it kind of stinks, when he, the description of this sounded like a really relaxing vacation. Like, he just had to, like, sleep for a year, and he wasn't allowed to do anything. I was like, that actually kind of sounds great. Oh, my God. <laughs> to be boneless and, like, just, like, sitting in a little room. Yeah, no, I'm not, no. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Not about it. Uh, Yeah. It's like, like every time sloth, I see a like dog not. and I'm like, fuck, I would love to just be a dog for like a year and have no concerns. Well, Tensoon was a dog for a year. Tensoon is your ideal character. You're like, I just want to be Tensoon. I mean, right now, Tensoon's one of my favorite characters in the series for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. I love yes. Tensoon. Yes, yes. Tensoon Fantastic. is not only like super cool, also very funny <laughs> and like kind of an <laughs> asshole in a yeah. way that I'm like, I, I see you. Yeah. We I feel seen. Uh, Scafandi, welcome back to the nerd table. Do you think Condor can have children as a human? No. They're shooting fucking blanks. Yeah. Yeah. But if, like, they were a woman who had sex with a human, do you think their womb would be able to, like... I don't know. That is such I mean, a complicated you... process that I think a Condor would have to study it I think that forever. if you did IVF, a Condor womb could... Do that. I don't think a chondra would necessarily recreate the monthly. Here's the everything thing: the, the chondra would have to want to have that baby, and I don't know if they would. Yeah, like I feel like I feel like you could IVF a fertilized egg into a chondra, and the womb would probably grow it. I don't know that you could. I don't know that they would. Ha I don't know that a chondra by eating a, a a womb and some ovaries would be able to, like, put together the process of ovulation. 
And so well, I don't think that you could like impregnate a chondra, but I think that you could impregnate a chondra artificially. In Alabama, yeah. which now allows IVF treatments again. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Um, but then our All zoo, comes back around. Our zoo says that the baby wouldn't be a baby chondra because it would be a human it would be all be human DNA just like, like no, it wouldn't be you, in you a can't make a chondra, but okay, hear me out. Uh-huh. You could take the egg, fertilize it from the woman, right? Uh-huh. Chondra comes, that woman dies, right? You have a man, he's so sad. He just wants a baby with his wife, right? So the chondra, they hire the chondra with ATM to come and eat the corpse of his wife, reconstitute her body, and then put her fertilized egg back in her body. It's like the ultimate surrogate. Wow. Alabama would love that. <laughs> and this is where we say, oh boy. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> uh, wow. Wow. Jeffrey T. Briggs have a good point. The birth would be easy. Just reach through and pull it out through the skin. Yeah. That's true. Because the, they would just like, oh my God. You could just make an opening and then it falls out of. Yeah, chondra would just open. They, they, Dilate I think that the is 10 the, centimeters? Easy. I think that is the actual definition of popping that pussy. You know what I mean? I think I think that that is what Nicki yeah. Minaj means when she says pop that pussy. Yeah. Nicki Minaj is a chondra. Yeah. That's why her butt keeps getting bigger. No, that's called surgery. <laughs> Oh, anyways, Tensoon has been imprisoned for a year. Um, he's not having a good time. Um, but you know what? He he's like I I believe in in what I did. Yeah. So when they try to like kill him mm-hmm. with acid, they like take him out and they try to murder him before he can make a tongue and say anything yeah <laughs> but so he he can reconstitute faster he's, than any other he's got this because he is the pro sh- reconstitutor yeah. he is he, he is uh Tensoon understands human anatomy better than anyone yeah and so he's like Makes judgment real fast judgment and they're like no 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 just die you, you don't want to do this no we don't want to do a trial and Tensoon is like no 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 judgment and they're like all right you asked for it yeah and so he's only partially Burned by acid? Yeah. Only some of his flesh is burned away. But he can just, like, let go of the burn shit. It's Chondra cool, man. I, yeah. He's like, I don't need that muscle mass. I'll just consume more flesh. I don't, I don't need that. Yeah. God. Also, like, the image of him, like, trying to create, like, a bubble, in, a bowl in his body so that the slop doesn't go down the sides was very, whoa. Yeah. Uh, and My so, yeah. Didn't like that. He's gonna, um, he's gonna get a trial. Uh, chapter three, we cut back to the charge. Ellen leads the army of untrained ska against the Coloss that are bearing down upon them. They and do good work. They fight. They fight really well. This action sequence is really cool. Yeah. I think Start off strong. Yeah. I, I love that the 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 thing... Uh, um, I love that it works. You know what I mean? I love that Ellen's strategy like bears fruit here and they are able to take out a chunk of the Coloss, not yeah. enough to really affect the tide of the war, uh-huh. but enough that we, we kind of learn that the Coloss break down when they are confronted by a smaller enemy beating a larger thing. Yeah. And that because they Coloss... They cannot understand it. <laughs> their entire pathology is built upon the idea that as you get bigger, you are stronger and therefore you are more unbeatable or that that you are more you know deserving of position Mm -hmm. vin popping in and being this small girl who can wipe out the largest of them and this small force being able to go toe-to-toe with such a larger force you know breaks the coloss mentally yeah shatters their expectations and their understanding of life which allows vin and ellen to take control of them it's just like there's the action of the sequence that is playing out in a way that is very fun and exciting and has the like boom bang bing bong you know of Mm -hmm. the fighting that you want from the opening of a book to get you hooked in on you know the action of it yeah but there's also a like deep sociological study of a race going on in the background Mm -hmm. that i think is really interesting to examine through combat yeah yeah i i yeah I thought this was a really strong opening to the book, um, especially with, like, 
with, with, like you said, a really cool action sequence. Um, obviously, yeah, Vin shows up, fucks the shit up. Uh, a Steel Inquisitor shows up, who, like, the Coloss, who, who, who was, like, had control of these Coloss, mm -hmm. which was a, a big part of the plan, was to draw him out so that they could yeah. use the Coloss and also maybe find out what the Steel Inquisitors are doing, because, like, what the fuck, man? Um, so, yeah, they have a really cool battle with the Steel Inquisitor, who has this protective plate over the, the spike that is its weakness. Yeah. Um, which they were like, oh, yeah, it makes sense that the Lord Ruler wouldn't allow something like that. Yes. Yeah. Obviously. But now, it's a fucking free-for-all, and so they have, like, an armor, this armor designed to protect their, like, one weakness. It is... It is the most sequel to a video game thing ever to be like, you. oh, you spent the entirety of Jedi Fallen Order figuring out how to beat the stormtroopers this way? Well, in Jedi Survivor, they now have a shield that stops that very specific way to beat them. Yeah, yeah. It is, it, this, is, this is where I'm like, I think Brandon Sanderson plays video games. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would love to watch him play Baldur's Gate. Oh. I feel like his, or not critique, but his... I, I say critique. Well, no, but I, I mean critique. Yeah. I just don't mean it negatively. P P yeah, yeah. Because people think like critiquing something means always means it. it just drives me crazy. They're like, well, you critiqued it, and I'm like, well, yeah, ev everything I do is a critique. That's the, mm. the art of what this is, right? Yeah. But his discussing the way the story plays out within Baldur's Gate, I think would actually be really fascinating. Oh, I would, I would absolutely watch that. I would play with him, Brandon Sanderson. If you ever want to like do like a video game stream with somebody. I know you have a podcast with your friend, and that's dope and chill, but, like, come it's play a uh, run of Baldur's Gate 3 with me, <laughs> live on the internet. Why not? Well, Bull, thank you so much for the super chat. Every time Scott said in these series, it would trigger real big fish to play in my head. That's funny. <laughs> when we were in, um, when we were in Denver... Uh, one of the first nights we were in Denver with our friends, we got in the hot, I got in the hot tub with, uh, a, a DM friend, uh, who was on the trip and another guy and we were listening to Ska and we, we were like, guys, we have to start a podcast where we talk about Ska in hot tubs and we'll, we'll call it the Ska Spa podcast. All right. And we became, we were joking about the, the Ska Spa for like the whole week. We we're having so much fun with it. I love that. Oh man. The Ska's spa great. Spa. The Ska Spa. Um, the Ska Spa is opening in Luthadel uh, currently. They are hollowing out those tubs. They need it, yeah. honestly. Um, <laughs> we have our favorite spa, so we won't go to Ska Spa because we don't. We want to be loyal. We're brand loyalists, but uh, sure. If, yeah. If you're looking for a new spa, try the Ska Spa. It's uh, where Keep Venture used to be. It's now just a resort. I can't imagine they moved back into Keep Venture. Like, that's where Dachshund was killed. Yeah, that's... It feels like there's too much baggage. Yeah, no, I agree. Build something new. Yeah, tear that shit down. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Vin Vin drops in. Uh, she's fighting Inquisitor. Ellen helps her out. We, we kind of get the... The thing that at first I kind of cringed at a little bit, mm -hmm. um, which is the reveal that... Ellen is, Ellen is stronger. Is because he's the man but but it isn't that once we kind of got the reasoning why ellen is so powerful with yeah. his allomancy i accepted it more yeah but at yeah. first i just kind of i i cringed a little bit at um i cringed a little bit at the trope of it which is the like i've been doing it longer and i'm more agile but they have more physical power yeah yeah you're like okay that's a little like <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, Brian. Sorry, Arazu was like, <laughs> uh, yeah. There's, there's gonna, there's gonna be spoilers. I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> Wait, did Brian Bill come in and say I don't? Brian is like, I just started reading Mistborn, <laughs> and Arazu was like, get out of here. And then you were like, Doxen died. We. <laughs> We are an hour into this. <laughs> no, I know. That is not on us. No, no. Uh, we accept no responsibility for it. Um, but You're I... totally good. <laughs> Brian, uh, it's not... The... Thankfully, it's not the biggest spoiler in the world. Eh, yeah. And honestly, the books are so worth it. Don't stop reading that. Yeah. It is so good. It's so good. You'll Stick love it. Stick with it. Yeah. To yeah, run. Get out of here. <laughs> this is not the place for you. We're an hour in. We are talking spoilers for this. And apparently, Wheel of Time, because we can't stop spoiling Wheel of Time. Although, I feel like we haven't spoiled anything that important in Wheel of Time in all of it. It's kind of like yeah. that we've skirted the edge of some stuff that yeah, we're like... Yeah, it's fine. It's a joke. But we're gonna we're just not going to bring up the Wheel of Time ever again. We're going to try. We're, yeah. we're really going to try. 
really maybe we'll say really the full try. book recaps are wheel of time spoilers <laughs> sure less people watch them i don't know um yeah i don't think it matters too much i think most people are, came here from wheel of time no i a lot of people are cosmere people and they're i don't want to spoil the wheel of time with them so they're, we're gonna try really hard to okay yeah all right we're gonna do our best y'all yeah. sorry if we slip but we're gonna do our best yeah Hmm. Um, yeah, so they take control of the Colas. No problem. Easy peasy. Um, then we uh, get our first Sazed POV. Our hero of ages. Yeah. Well, and we, we think. Oh, we, we learned think. a couple of important things before we move on. Yeah. Uh, you can like transfer Colas control. Yeah. Vin has like half and Ellen has half. And then Vin is like, boop, you're going to have all of them except for human yeah. Human is mine. Vin gets one Coloss who's yeah. basically like a parallel to Tensoon in book two. Yes. Yeah. She's got like the like not human creature who, who she, she will... learns about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it becomes very important. Comes to respect and creates a place for them in the f future world. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. It's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, see, I, I see, I see the parallels here. Yeah. We'll see if it plays out differently. Every book is about vin having one of her prejudices broken down yeah right in book one it's her prejudices against the nobles in book two it's her prejudices against the uh chandra and then in book three it's gonna be her prejudices against the Colos. yeah yeah it's gonna be fun yeah chapter four say zed yeah say zed is just torturing himself mm -hmm. by constantly uh reading new religions and yep. then being like fuck religion religion's a lie tin was dead cut my life into pieces this is my last resort suffocation no religion tin was dead and i want to fucking die i'm seizing i'm dying and then breeze is like beautiful oh, god this fucking 19 year old girl just gives the best blowjobs <laughs> Uh, word for word, verbatim, actually. Yeah. Pulled quote from from the book. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that is the two that is the two <laughs> genders of this dynamic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, yeah. The yeah. This whole thing with Alrian is like a little bit weird. Mm. But like. <sighs> no, I'm so on board now. It, the oh. world is fucking coming to an end. Take whatever pleasures you can. I'm. I have fully yeah. turned around on Ariane. Ariane wanted this. She worked so fucking hard for this, and they're both happy. And sure. Every scene they're in together, they are like very kind and respectful to one another now. Wish, and I'm just like, whatever. I just wish she was a couple years older. You, you try. Being, you try dating in the apocalypse. Her being like 19 is just like. I think she's like 21 now, but. Maybe, yeah. I think she I just, was 19 in... I just wish it was, like, like 25. Then I'd be like, you know what? I'm not even going to okay, think about it. It doesn't look, matter. But, look, like... They don't have Bumble, all right? There's no fucking farmers only. There's no J-date. There's, there's no, no Jewish people, but um, there's no J-date. Like... The, Christian Mingle? Wh what are they going to do? Not fucking till the world ends? Look, I get it. I get it. Alrian has pursued this relationship, and Breeze, like, resisted as long as he could. And that's, that is, I, I get it, and the world is ending, and I'm, like, willing to forgive circumstances. But I'm still just like, uh, it's just like, the, it's just the littlest bit weird. Just, just a teeny bit weird. Yeah, but you know what? It's the apocalypse, and, like, there's not a lot of options. Sure. And so, you know what? Be happy. Yeah, get that blowy. You said she gives great blowjobs. Yeah. I just, no. no. She probably does. Probably. She knows. Do, they, do, do you think they do oral in this world? Why not? I don't know. I, I Brave have... to have this on with no headphones at work. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That is. <laughs> Can you imagine some random office is walking by and they just hear me screaming suffocation and then Breeze is getting a blowjob. Yeah. The, the the two genders, uh, yeah. Mm. This podcast is wild, guys. Why would you <laughs> listen without headphones? Oh my god! You never know what we're gonna so, say. You never know. You know, maybe 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 you like to live dangerously, and power to you. But God, I could never. Um, yes. So, yeah. Seyzed is going through religion and is like, not that one, not that one. Fake, fake news, fake, fakety, fake, 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 fake. 
Um, because he's like, they can't be real. They have too many contradictions in them. But I'm gonna find the one re real religion. And if if it's Mormonism, I'm gonna I'm gonna. Johnny Coleman says no oral, just penetration. Just 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 penetration. Only. Penetration, no breathing. This is a deep throat. Uh, thank you so much for that uh, super chat, Johnny Coleman. Thank you, Johnny. The problem with headphones is that I scream so much that it's like uh, there, there's there. It's a double-edged sword. Yeah, you gotta really like crank the volume down. Um, yeah, I'm so sorry. Yeah, uh, do soaking. <laughs> Not surprised. Uh, <laughs> Just that Vin is like mistborn jumping up and down on the bed. Well, I feel like if you had like a metal cock ring, you could use it to push off. You no, know? if it's like a ring, it uh -huh. like is like you can't use Almancy on it. Only, Why? only, only the Lord Ruler. Not a piercing. Yeah, but if it's if you're wearing a ring, oh no, if, yeah, if the rings are wood. What? Oh yeah. Yeah, if you had a metal ring, you could totally use that as leverage. Oh my God, you would have to use so much so much glue. control. You would you need you need the craziest control in the world because if you came down too hard and you broke Ellen's dick, like that would be a tragedy. Well, as long as he's burning pewter, you're not gonna break his dick. Fair. He's a misborn. Now. That's fair, actually. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This the things do you, think, you could do. Do you think that if you burn pewter as a man, you, it like helps your stamina, or or does it make it feel no burning tin? I think would like make it like uh, overwhelming and make you come faster. Oh yeah, no. Lestabornis but... comes in seconds. Less Lestabornis. If a woman but now blew he too pewter. close to his penis, it would just pop. <laughs> But now he has pewter, so he can balance it out. Oh, He's got the normal normal. That's stamina. really what Kelser gave him those powers for. It 100%. wasn't about killing the citizen. No, Kelser no, no, no. gave him those powers because he wanted Lester Bornis to be able to last in bed. Yeah, yeah, which is really just a, a great service to Lester Bornis. So, I um. What the fuck is wrong with us? <laughs> Anyways, Sazed <laughs> is very depressed. This book was written by a Mormon. Yeah, so. <laughs> and this is what we've done to I him. I don't see the problem. Um, good guy, Kelsier. Exactly. He's just trying to do right by oh his buddy. Um, yes. Says that very depressed, trying to disprove religions until he can find the, the, the correct one. Um, They're sitting in uh, the Lee Cal sitting room waiting for Lee Cal to sign the treaty. And he does. Because, like, what is he going to do? Fight yeah, yeah. the Mistborns? Yeah, not going to happen. Mistborn 1 and Mistborn 2? <laughs> Fuck no. <laughs> Uh, Vin and Ellen are just thing one and thing two. I mean, kind of at this Say point. Say that is the cat in the hat, because he's the hero, the hero of ages. Yes. Don't make me think about that movie. <laughs> Who was it that you thought was in that movie? It wasn't me. It was somebody else. Oh. Who I, thought it I was? I just assumed that it was you wrong about some. Part no, of the movie which it. normally I am, but no. it wasn't me this time. So, yeah, someone weren't they like it was some, but it was someone. It wasn't a comedian. Alice is, Baldwin or something. Yeah, it was something crazy. Was the cat in the hat, and, and I, I was like, like it was no. Mike Myers. Yeah, no, somebody thought it was Alec Baldwin. It was Alec Baldwin. That's right. Yeah, but it's not Alec. Baldwin. Which I would want to see that movie. I don't. Alec Baldwin is the cat movie. in the hat. I don't want to see that movie. Was it Fanta? No, I don't think so. Fuck that conversation was so. Funny. I'm not sure. Doesn't matter. Chapter five. Uh, yes. Wow, we're doing so good. Already an hour and ten minutes into this podcast. Uh, chapter five is where we get a really interesting um, reveal about Russia. We're an hour in. Oh yes. my god, there's thirty two chapters up. to talk about. Hurry up! Don't snap at me. <laughs> you know I don't like that. I know. I'm, um, I'm just giving you shit. Uh, every time uh, this is the epigraph from chapter five. Each time Rachek tried to fix things, he made them worse. He had to change the world's plants to make them survive in a new, harsh environment. Mm -hmm. Yet that change left the plants less nutritious to mankind. Mm -hmm. Indeed, the falling ash would make men sick, causing them to cough like those who spent long, too long mining beneath the earth. So Rosh has changed mankind as well. I'll turn them so they could survive. Well done. 10 out of 10 accent. Very consistent. You know what? It's about as consistent as anything I do on our Dragonlance show. Um, <laughs> this is a really cool reveal about Rashek in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I love this idea that Rashek keeps fucking up. Yeah. Yeah. He fucked up real bad and then he tried to fix that by fucking up a little less bad mm -hmm. and then tried to fix that by fucking up a little less bad. Yeah. And that that's kind of his strategy. Guys, what do I not know? What is fucking going on in chat? Know. Apparently it's something that I know though because no one has said she. Everyone has just said he. So apparently I know something that you don't. 
I know, but like, what what do I not know? Because they I brought it up at the beginning of the fucking thing, and now they're they're still bringing it up. I know. Um, but yeah, no, I I like I like the way that this is done. I think that it makes a lot of sense because in book one I was like, this world doesn't work. Yeah. Right. Like this world doesn't. Like what the fuck happened? Function logically. Yeah. Based on my understanding of the world, right? And so the fact that so much. Um, it, 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 the fact that it kind of like retcons in a reason why people are able to survive in the world. Not really a retcon though, because I'm sure this was always the plan. But oh, just yeah. like for me, for my understanding of the world, retcons in. I, I think it was really strong. I uh, This book does a lot of that. And I do wonder how much of it was planned and how much of it was Brandon Sanderson like responding to um, maybe criticisms of his world building. It feels like, honestly, this was the plan from the beginning. Like, it doesn't mm-hmm. feel shoehorned in there. It feels very intentional. So I'm going to guess this was the original plan. I'm not making a judgment either way. Yeah. I'm just curious how much of it was like... Because I could I could definitely see writing a book, putting it out, and people being like, wait, but like this doesn't function with like science. About science stuff that I just don't know because I don't know everything about science. Yeah. And then in book three being like, I figured out a way to solve that science problem I accidentally wrote into book one. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, All three books were written before the first was published. Oh, so really? Seems like it was a pretty solid plan. With no editing? You sure about that? No, it, well, no, that's not true. Um, <laughs> editors are very important in the publication process. But no, the, this um, the, cool. these epigraphs did a lot of work towards making me understand what's going on. I feel um, like I've learned so much yeah. about this world and not in a way that feels like cheap. Like I think like it does feel like it's been very well thought out and delivered in a way that I find interesting. It also builds up in a big way the power, right, of the Well of Ascension. And I think that the value of that is so huge. Yeah. Because I I do, I think that it's really important, right, that if you're going to introduce, these characters can use the power of God. Yeah. That the power of God actually feel like God power and not just like a superpower, Mm -hmm. right? A a superpower that a Marvel character might have. Yeah. Although there are gods in Marvel, but... I, I, this feels like a legitimately god level power the ability to move the planet closer to the sun is fucking crazy right yeah, yeah. and so i think that the this a explains all the past stuff but also it really does make the well of ascension feel as massive as possible yes and that's really fucking cool yeah no i i like I'm so glad we decided to do this series because I, I've been loving it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely loving this journey. Um, uh, Bogdan Danbog, thank you for that super chat. This super chat is brought to you by the Full Cosmo Spoiler Channel gang. We just want to make it clear that Nerdy is washed for not predicting the symbiotic as digesting bacteria. <laughs> yeah, you're slipping. I don't know what to tell you. Guys, I need to, I need to make more predictions about bacteria, apparently. Yeah, yeah. You're it, too too big. You got things smaller. It does make sense, though, right? Because yeah. ash isn't black, purely, but it is in this world, right? Yeah. And be, be, because... Thank you, Bogdan, by the way. Thank you. What And it's what's so fascinating about climate change, right? Is that mm-hmm. the... We, we're dealing with the issue of we are putting too much black shit in the air not visibly to us right the black shit we're putting into the air is microscopic yeah yeah yeah. and it is creating a layer of protection around the earth that is keeping um that 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 is keeping the heat inside right so we are we're warming our planet through the stuff we put in the air yeah And, and when you look at a lot of this stuff on a microscopic level it's very dark methane is methane is a far darker material in the air than say carbon dioxide we're putting a lot more carbon in the air than methane but you know they they both add to the problem Mm -hmm. once you get past a certain point right we're at the point now where the air is still the light is still getting in and it's trapped in once we get past a certain point with uh the with pollution Mm -hmm. it actually reverses yeah and it gets so thick that the light doesn't even get in in the first place and so you know and so it is so interesting that rashek in his attempts to solve the problem of moving the planets too close to the sun, was like, oh, I'm going to create wild global warming to the point where it actually becomes yeah. global cooling, right? Right, yeah. And, um... <laughs> yeah? It's... Because it, it, it's such a bad way to fix the problem 
because ultimately once you pollute the air enough, there's going to be a sweet spot period where there's just enough ash in the air that it cools the planet from moving closer to the sun. Yeah. But once it cools it too much by having too much ash in the air, you are eventually just going to make it possible for the mists to come back. So you, <laughs> you've literally put like an end date on the effectiveness of your solution. Right. Um, and so bacteria that eats some of the ashes is, is smart. It's fun. They've... Arzu says you can now go laugh at all the memes in the Discord Cosmere chat. They've been getting them pre-approved. Y'all have been saving memes? <laughs> Oh my god, what the fuck? Uh, Bogdan Danbog, also, uh, thank you for the super chat, and welcome back to the nerd table. Um, y'all are... <laughs> y'all are fucking next level, and I, I, uh, I commend you for it. Um, oh god, oh my god, there's so many memes. You guys are ridiculous, I'll look at those later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's gonna be, it's, it's, it's a fascinating, uh, solution to a problem. Um, yeah. and Roshik's brain is really, really, uh, it's cool. I, I as much as mm. I hate Roshik, and, uh, you know, I, there's, there's some elements of the, like, apologism for Roshik's plans, um, that I'm like, oh, God, he still was a slaver, you guys. I feel like, yeah. we, I feel like we are glossing over how much slavery was in these books, um, a little bit, yeah. but, or in his, um, world, but... Because, like, here's here's the yeah. thing. He literally was like, I'm going to make the ska better at having babies. So I don't mind can, that. That, like... So that they can be slaves and we can kill the them yeah, at yeah, large yeah. Not, rights. Like, like. <laughs> Making the people fertile isn't a problem. The problem is that they keep praising him for being really good at organizing and for, like, resource management. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, it is so easy to resource manage when you have, when the, you have free labor. Like, the United States economic boom at the beginning of its life as a country came about because the labor was free. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It, it, is, mm -hmm. it is so much harder to run a society where you have to pay everybody. Yeah, yeah. As we've seen since we ended slavery, it is harder. It is so much easier yeah. for the 1% to make obscene amounts of wealth when they don't pay the people who work for them. Yeah, and, and Will says he's not a good guy, not, like, still not a good guy, but he thought he was a good guy, which is the sign of a good villain, which... Uh, I totally, agree with that, yeah, yeah. Totally. He believed he was so in the right. Yeah. Um, and that is, like, that is very clear, and it does make him infinitely more interesting to read about. Because um, he feels real. He feels like an actual person that exists or could exist. Um, Diane, welcome to the nerd table as well. Let's fucking go. Um, <coughs> Philip says, a slaver and a genocidal despotic warmonger. He didn't really warmonger. Well, he did conquer everywhere. He, no, like, he didn't. Yeah, yeah. Like the first hundred years were him conquering the entire country. Oh, oh, yeah. Nope, yep, yep, yep. Yeah. You're right. He was like, nah, fuck you. I'm God. Get wrecked. Like. I mean, he only did it once. To he only not have war after he that. He only did it once, guys. It's fine. That's what Ellen is doing. Only doing it once. Well, and that's why Ellen's so concerned. Yes. Uh, Biz says Ellen he's way worse than Tuan. They're kind of the same. They're kind of like almost exactly the same. Yeah, it's just that Rashak had more power. And yeah, like Tuan doesn't. Well, I don't know. We don't know that Rashak had power outside of like this continent. And Tuan has the entirety of the Sanjin. So well, they're kind of the combination the of, same. of he had the combination of uh, ferrochemy and allomancy, which in and of itself I think is Oh you mean magic power. I meant like yeah. Oh yeah, no, I meant I meant magic power. <laughs> um anyway, chapter five. God, we're so fucked. Uh Ellen uh I is... hope you're uh, ready for a five hour podcast. <laughs> yeah, so uh they go back to Vetitan, Vetitian, I don't know. Vetitian, I I'm assuming Vetitan. I'm, I thought it was Vatitian. Ba -da 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 -da. They go back to Vatitian. Uh, Aaron Yeager shows up. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Aaron Yeager. Oh, God. Mikasa's there. She has superpowers. She never uses That's them. Been, it's very weird. Actually. Honestly? Honestly, yes. Yeah, I know. But in a way that, like, it's not even a spoiler to say Mikasa has superpowers because it is never relevant. No. Anyway. Doesn't matter. I, I, I need to stop talking about Attack on Titan on the internet. Yeah. Um, don't do it. Uh, Ellen and, uh, they, they go, they use their Duralman to get down into the basement mm -hmm. where they find that there's a shit ton of food. It's a cache. Because uh, the Lord Ruler was a planner. Yeah. And he was a type A, for sure. And they, uh, find another message inscribed in steel for them. This one ends with a little postscript by the Lord Ruler that only Vin reads, that reads... He can fucking hear you. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Don't say anything out loud. You got to keep it all in your brain. Yeah. 
which Dum -dums. is going to be very inconvenient. Yeah. And so um, we get to chapter six. Um, yeah. Marsh is lucid for a moment and then Ruin like takes him over again and he's like, fuck. Uh, but. the Coloss are, they have like a massive Coloss camp with like 300,000 Coloss or some bullshit. Yeah. And, yeah. um. Yeah, they have to breed somehow. And I, I, I don't, I don't know what that is yet. We find out that, uh, as Marsh gets taken over, that, uh, he goes from being depressed about the state of the world to finding beauty in, uh, as it falls apart. Yeah. And he's like, oh my God, he's it's like, That's hot. so hot that everyone's yeah. dying. Yeah, I love uh, death. And so I'm beginning so to think. sexy. I don't know, guys. I think Ruin might not be a very good person. Mm, are you sure? Yeah. I'm, I'm I thinking that Ruin might not be very good. What gave it away? Uh, everything. Uh, all of it. The beginning, the middle, and the end. All of it. Okay. Yeah. You have it here, folks. Johnny Coleman, thank you for that uh, super chat. Thank you. You're going too fast through the book. Let's slow down and talk more about penetration. Well, Marsh so, has been penetrated. When a man no, no, Marsh loves has been a penetrated woman. more times than anybody else. Yeah. Marsh has been, Marsh has got 10 more penetrations. Severely penetrated. Yeah. Uh, which I'm like, how many? You said you thought he had 18 spikes in him? I believe so. Which means that there are more powers than no, no. We he's know getting about. more powerful in the ones that he has. But if you put in a pewter spike and then you put in another pewter spike, does that just double the pewter power? Yes, because okay, so if you have are one, you sure? yes, because ruin, right? The way that the the way that hemology works uh -huh. is that when you drive a spike through somebody into somebody else, yeah, they take when as they die, they take a portion of your pewter power. And so, if you, in order for you to be as strong as somebody who is like a true pewter arm, you need to take the power of multiple pewter arms because you're getting a percentage of it. So you need. But like, then they would have like fifty spikes in them because the Lord Ruler would have wanted them to be incredibly powerful. No, he didn't want them to be able to challenge him. So they no, were limited he, by how many spikes they had at the time. No, he just built in a weakness where he could, like, but they, literally yank that spike out. Because he can affect yes, metals inside someone's body. But he also didn't let them get too powerful. They all had the exact same spikes. They all had the exact same configuration. And now that Ruin is going a little bit wild, they are unburdened by that. And that is why he is having so many more spikes put in. Is to is to beef him up. Make I him think more there's more metals. I That's don't be my guess. just because that there's there just can't be that many powers and also we already see that there are two steel spikes in their faces. We already yeah. see that there are like that I there's symmetrical spikes in this inquisitors. Does it matter what metal is driven through you? Because they talk about oh, brass. Oh, does it matter? Does it just matter what the misting that it went through has? Yeah, because they talk about brass in the mm. very first section, right? But then, like, but then when Lestabornis gets pierced, <coughs> that's just a sword. So it's probably made of like steel and iron, which then should have maybe given. So, but, but he was it went through a pewter arm, so he got pewter. Mm -hmm. So it seems to me that the actual metal of the spike doesn't matter, unless the sword was the right metal to but make it wasn't some pewter. Pewter, but like the sword isn't made out of. I don't think that the because like ferrochemy, I don't think it's a one to one. What do you mean? Like, a, pu a pewter mind doesn't do the exact same thing as pewter does for alamancers. So I okay. don't know that the spikes necessarily are going to line up one-to-one -one like that. I don't think a pewter spike does for a, a, for hemallergy what burning pewter does for alamancy. Because it doesn't do that for ferrochemy. Right? So you just think that hemallergy has its own set of rules, but that the metal does matter? I don't know. I think it could, it could not. We'll find out later. Yeah, okay. I also think that this makes the Lord Ruler and the way that his ferrochemist stuff was piercing him very interesting because I wonder if any of that had to do with ferrochemy. Oh. I wonder if the Lord Ruler had some fer or had some, sorry, oh. so had some heme allergy going on. Oh, the Lord Ruler was never an alamancer and a ferrochemist. No, he was because in the epigraphs of this book, they say that he was. They do? Yeah, they say that he was a fair chemist before and that yeah. he was he, he took one given... of the first nine beads of um Yeah. Mm. So he wasn't born with both because obviously okay, Alex didn't, Alex didn't exist. exist before yeah. then. Well, no, I feel like it had to have existed 
because the three like magics like balance each other out. Sure, so, but it but didn't nobody exist knew in society about it. Yeah. until they took the beads. Him in the first nine. Yeah, interesting. And so he was as powerful as the other eight of them, but he had fair akemi, so he was a little bit more powerful than the others. Hmm. But they all had the same power level in allomancy. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. This is in, oh, am I in the Baldur's Gate three category on Twitch? Oh no! <laughs> Oopsie. Let me fix that really quick. Thank you, Fabu. Yeah, no, we we should. Uh... I'm usually good. I've I've been good about it every week. I yeah, just it's fine. Fucked up today. Things happen. Um, interesting. Okay. Yeah, I just it just feels weird to me that um they would mention a brass spike in the beginning. And, but then it wouldn't matter. So I feel like it, it's got to matter, even that, if it's not a one-for-one. That, one. that is why I agree with you, is because I do think that if it didn't matter, then they wouldn't mention what kind of spike it was. Yeah. So I just think the sword just happened to be the right kind of metal to transfer pewter arm power into um, mm. Lestabornis. Okay. The question is, why is Ruin showing up to Lestabornis as Kelsier? Yeah. But... Well, yeah. And that's what I, I, I feel like. I feel like people believing in like the Church of the Survivor and in Kelsier in the way that they are currently is like helping Ruin. Yeah. Because, mm -hmm. you know, Kelsier's whole thing was like murder all the nobles and Ruin is trying to, you know, break things down, take things away. And yeah, so, yeah, yeah. you know, eliminating noble blood seems to align with Ruin. I have to pee. I'll be right back. Oh, it's that time of the show, y'all. The problem is we're still in part one. Um, uh, chapter seven, Tensoon consumes a new body and is carried away to his trial. That's all that happens. Uh, chapter eight, um, Vin is watching as the mists are like killing people from t v t v Titan. Uh, Ellen does not have time to walk them to Luthadel only during the time, the mistless times in the middle of the day. And so 15% uh, of them, or 16% of them die or get sick. I, I think it's 16% get sick. Exactly 16% get... In Fabu, there's not a lot in that chapter. It's literally just that he, like, consumes a body and then he gets given a body and then he goes. There's not a lot to it. The, the good shit with Tensun is coming up. Um, but, uh, yeah, so the, they leave and they start heading back towards the city they make the plan that breeze and says are going to go up to erto and they're going to try and deal with the citizen and everything going up there and then the uh the rest of them are going to go to fadrex to set's city uh and they are going to attempt to get into the final cavern and see what it holds and uh not 16 percent one sixteenth i'm pretty sure it's exactly 16 percent code um, I, they specifically say 16% rather frequently, uh, get sick, but I don't know how many die, but 16% exactly, um, do get sick. And, uh, yeah, so they, they head out. Uh, chapter nine, um, we go back to Tensoon. Uh, Khan Par uh, of the second generation. We get a lot of like every hundred years there's a new generation of Khandra. And so the Khandra are growing. The younger generations are a lot larger than the uh, older generations. But Khan Par is of the second generation who's a generation older than Hinsoon. And uh, they go into the um, they go into a courtroom and the first generation is up in the dark up above in their shadowed alcoves, backlit by blue light. They don't like people. They don't like interaction. They're a thousand years old. Yeah. I mean, they're probably just like fucking. They're so sick tired. of everyone's shit. Like. Oh my god, I wouldn't want to talk imagine. to anyone either. I'd even be done with the seconds at that point. And. <laughs> Been around for too long. Yeah. Um. So they. They, yeah, they, they do the trial. And Tensoon is like, I would speak. And they're like, oh, fucking fine. And then he's like, you guys don't understand. Uh, mother was mothering so hard. <laughs> and so I had to, like, help her out. 
mother was mothering. And they're like, Mother was mothering so hard. What are you talking about? They're like, well, obviously, like, Vin killed the Lord Ruler, and he was daddy, so that means she's mommy. Like, that's how this works, right? Mommy penetrated daddy. Yeah. She she used a strap-on, and she penetrated daddy with it. The yeah. strap-on was a spear, but, you know, it's still... Counts. It counts, and uh, so now she is mommy. Yeah. And so I had to help her. I don't. I don't know. I. You know, there are contracts, mm -hmm. and then there is the first contract, and uh, so which the first contract has a clause of um like that all the Chandra must yeah. like mass suicide themselves. Yeah, can't wait for that. That's um I I I feel like is this a commentary on the am um, I uh, fuck never the mind. Don't, 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 don't. Oh, don't, oh, don't. yeah. Spoilers. Fuck, how do we do this? <laughs> Why is this so hard? <laughs> Why is this so hard? It's because this is an ongoing, this book club is an ongoing conversation. Yeah. And so it's hard because, like, we want to reference the ongoing conversation of past stuff. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to spoil shit. Mm -hmm. Even though it's not even a spoiler because, fuck, no. Nah. Doesn't matter. I could go on for yeah, days. Yeah, because it doesn't it. matter. Um, Anything is a penetrator fine. if you're able to push hard enough. Thanks, Diamond. That's the that's the kind of commentary the show needs. You know what? That's that's the kind of optimism that we need, right? You got this. I, I don't believe know if the person you. being penetrated by a plane is feeling very optimistic, but did you ask them? I no, they're dead. No, they died. <laughs> it it did kill them. Exactly. So they can't complain about it. Uh, and so there, there, there's a trial. It's really cool. Uh, and he's like, "Hey, motherfuckers, we gotta help her." And they're like, "Fuck you! You're gonna spe We're gonna. S you're guilty, but we're gonna sentence you in a month." Yeah, you're uh, gonna be like put in the stocks. Enjoy being in a public cell in the middle of the lobby where people can look at you. Yeah, Arzu, thank you for that super chat. The mysticness is why I deleted a comment saying "mistaken" in an early podcast that you thought was a funny joke. <laughs> Have you been thinking about that since then? <laughs> Oh, I see why that might have been a spoiler. That is, okay. I get it. I get it. That is very funny. That is very funny. That's fun. Yeah. But I do understand being like, oh, that does kind of happen later. So, well, thank you yeah. for the super chat, Arzu. Yeah, thank you, Arzu. We appreciate you. <laughs> um, So, chapter 10, uh, this is where we get that uh, the, the, the way in which Ellen became a Mistborn is called Nuggets of Pure Allomancy. Which, like, is a fine name for it. Like, there's nothing actually wrong with that. But I also laughed at it. I don't think that's the official, like, copyright Because I just title. was like, oh, my God. I love that it's the nuggets of pure allomancy. But it's I not... would love if one of these books was called Mistborn Book 4, The Nuggets of Pure Allomancy. But it's not a title. It's not The Nuggets. It's just that there are nuggets of pure allomancy that exist. I know, but the but sentence, the sentence is nuggets of pure allomancy, mm -hmm. the power of preservation itself. Chicky Everything nuggies. after nuggets. Should be that's, nuggies. That is why it makes me laugh, Nug though. Nuggies. They should be called nuggies. And, like, I know sure. that nuggets are, I know nugget is a, a unit of metal. I totally understand that. Yeah. I just thought it was really funny that the that this epigraph started with nuggets of pure allomancy. No, I want chicky nuggies. I had a giggle. It was great. <laughs> I had a giggle. Yeah. Uh, uh, and so I wonder, like, I want, so th this brought up a question, though. Are the main houses the other eight original Alamancers? So, like, was the original, was one of the original eight a venture? Um, was somewhere along the venture line, yeah. But what, but would it have been, was it, is, like, the name venture? Lee Cal, was Lee Cal one of the first eight? Alariel, was that one of the original eight Alamancers? I, I don't know. I, m maybe it's possible, but like... With the way in which the Lord Ruler... It talks a lot in the epigraphs about the way he stagnated the culture and technology of this world. Mm -hmm. I do wonder if the house names stayed stagnant as well. Within like his ability to kind of but keep But there's them. more than like eight of them, so... But, but there are like the most powerful houses in... Because we, we, we get to... Um, when we get to Fadrix later, there's the like the like cousin houses of the main houses right yes like, uh the the the, bi like, the boss bitch in fadrix yeah. is a lesser house of the alarial line right uh, here's the thing the ventures became very powerful when they took over the atm mines so i don't know if they would have been an original but they were already very powerful before that were they yeah that their keep is one of the older keeps in it's it's definitely larger. They they've also probably been mining the ATM for hundreds of years. Oh, I thought that was a recent acquisition. 
that like the Lord Ruler gave uh, gave oh control God. It to always, Strath. It's all of it. All fantasy is just Dune eventually. <laughs> eventually, it's all just Dune. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Literally, like the Emperor gave fucking the Venture household the ATM mines, yeah, and then the younger son rises up against the Emperor. Yeah, it's he's just Paul Atreides. And then he gets superpowers in the sequel. He hits Dune. Yeah. Oh my god, we're reading Dune again! Everything is just Dune. Guys, we've been Duned. We've been Duned. How did I not see it? If the were... ATM must flow. <laughs> ah! Oh, wow. It's almost like Dune is really old. Does that make, um, does that make Kelsier Duncan Idaho? <laughs> does Kelsier come back and fuck the entire galaxy? Well, sorry, spoilers for two. Definitely like fucks less the boringness, you know, penetrates him real good. So, <laughs> oh. and, and less the boringness is gonna save the world. Oh my god. Yes, it's it's either Dune or Lord of the Rings. Dune is kind of like the sci-fi fantasy version, and Lord of the Rings is like the like hard fantasy, like you know, elves and shit. Lord of the Rings is kind of like the only because it predates Dune. Yes, <laughs> it's the exactly. only thing that isn't just Dune. Exactly. Yes, one hundred percent. Yeah, it's um, it, by 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 coming out twenty years before Dune, it's not Dune, but everything post Dune is just Dune. Every, everything post Dune is just Dune. Yeah, I uh, I love that. Yeah. 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 Um, eh, d don't worry. The, the, the Dune movies are probably not going to get into any of that. Like, like truly any of that. So don't, oh. don't worry. Also. Those books get fucking If weird. you want to under like, what I said is technically a spoiler in a way that, like, isn't a spoiler. Because once you, when you read the book, you'll be like, oh, it's funny that you said that, but that's not really that... You you turn you you distilled a very wild large thing into a single joke that doesn't really encapsulate yeah. the. Don't large worry, thing. you're fine. If you want to go <clears throat> read those books, you read can. Um, read the first one. Definitely read the first three. Sure, I've only read the first one. Joshua Chandler says everything post Children of Dune is bizarre. Everything from the beginning of Dune is bizarre. I mean, what? Yeah. It doesn't start it weird gets, in book four. No, but it gets weirder for sure. I know, but book two is weird. Yeah, I'm not gonna argue with you there. Um, go check out MistyMountainGaming.com. Thank you, Stream Elements. Appreciate it. Also, go check out Game Recepts, because I'm drinking titty milk, and it is delicious. Or, if you're having a tough day at work or in your relationship, dial 1-800-DUMP-HIM and dump him. Brought to you by this random mug that we found at Winners. I know, but I love it so much. It looks like a Bratz doll. I think it is a Bratz doll. Kind of looks like it. No, I think it's literally... Nerdy literally... Yeah, no, no, I think it's literally... Like, oh, it is Bratz. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Nerdy was like, I must have this mug. And I was like, okay. 1-800-DUMP-HIM is so funny. Okay? Uh, anyways, we're we're into section two now, right? Nope. Oh. <laughs> Oopsie. Uh... <laughs> All right. Uh, Sezid is looking at more religions. And yeah. he's like, oh, wow, this really artistic one... This is great. I like that idea of that. Nope. Wrong. False. He doesn't even find a reason to call it false. He's just like... He just decides. There's no divinity in it. And yeah. I was like, yeah, but like, there's also no divinity. So, uh, and then they Divinity reach... to original sin, actually. I want to play that again now that I'm like... Great game. Guys, great game. Oh, if you like Baldur's Gate... We never game, beat it. I know. If you like Baldur's Gate, you got to play the divinity games. Um, Ooh, I want to play Divinity 1. I want to play Pathfinder Kingmaker. I want to play everything. So many games. What if All we right, what about stopped Club? working and only played video games from now on? You know? Thoughts? I think... Um, d, d on Saturdays? Just no more reactions. We did Shogun Episode 1 and that's it. <laughs> just fucking teased everybody. Yeah. Yeah. We are going to be slowing down on reactions, y'all. I feel like we've burnt ourselves out a little bit on them. And so we're going to be pulling back just, just a little bit. We're not going to be posting yeah. two reactions a day anymore. Yeah. That's kind of bonkers. Yeah. We went a little bit too hard. And by we, I mean me. Yeah. And by, but let, let's, let's be really clear. There's a dividing line here where one of us reacted too much. Uh-huh. And you committed to one piece. Like that, that already, that should have been a clue. Um, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to slow, we're still going to have a lot of reactions. We're just not going to have all of the reactions. Yeah. 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 Because we're losing our minds. Um, just, just, just a little bit. Just uh, a little bit of yeah. mind loss. It's fine. We don't need brain cells. Um, we only everyone. have one to begin with. Yeah. And we share it. We do. That moment was weird. We got to turn that into hair a loss. Crazy. Uh, say Zed is like, yep, I'm depressed. And Vin is like, ah, that's rough, buddy. <laughs> 
But Breeze isn't depressed anymore because they get back to Alrian and those sweet, sweet blowjobs. Um, and yeah, the Seized leaves the picture of the flower that uh, yeah. Kelsier gave her. Yeah, that was that belonged to Mare. On the, which is why I think Seized is the hero of ages. Yeah. You know, it's just symbolic. Oh no, he is. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm I'm a thousand percent right about this. I I, I think so. There's there's just no other. There's no way it's Ham. And no. he's the only other person that doesn't break the my criteria. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Vin, oh, you're depressed. Have you tried hydration? Uh, no, she gives him, she gives him like, her equivalent of a meme. You know what I mean? Of when I'm meme. sad and my friends send me memes, I'm happier. Here. And she's like, here is a picture. Please accept this meme. Here is the only picture of a flower on the planet. True. That we know of. So enjoy that. Be yeah. happy. The Hero of Ages is the friends we made along the way. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, chapter 11 is um, Tensoon's interrogation of yeah. uh, why he killed Orsur. It plays out very much like Jack Nicholson. <laughs> Being like, you want the truth? You can't handle the truth! Sure. Uh, and then he reveals the truth. And they could not, in fact, handle the truth. Could not handle it, yeah. actually. Uh, he's like, yo, was too hot to handle. the world is coming to an end. We got to do something about it. And Kampar is like, fuck you, bitch. Fuck you, yeah. yeah. Uh, chapter 12. Uh, yeah, we kind of covered the she is mommy thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Ellen and Vin uh, and everyone, they get together with the army. Uh, we already actually covered this. They kind of make a plan. Njordan is there. Uh, Set's kid, Njordan. Yeah, what a name. My boy, Njordan. I don't. It, it, Njordan, get in here. My brain doesn't like that one. Njordan. Daddy's gonna spank that ass. Get in here, Njordan. Oh, come on. You know Set spanks his kids. Oh, he's a bad father. He's not a great guy, yeah. no. But he's um, apparently a great artist. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, at, at Ellen motivates his crew by being like, guys, what would Kelsier do? Because. <laughs> That's the t-shirt. What would Kelsier do? What would Kelsier well, no, do? No, we need to get those r rubber bracelets and just have oh WWKD. Yeah, yeah, And when people are like, is it supposed to be WWJD? Yeah, no, no, it's no. It's like, no, 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 Kelsier. What would Kelsier do? Have you heard about our Lord and Savior, Kelsier the Survivor? Oh, my God. We just need all, like, Church of the Survivor merch line. That's like, actually really funny. Right? What was the t-shirt you were going to make last week? I forgot. Oh, Lendy did nothing wrong. Oh, we need to make that as well. Yeah. yeah. Blue-eyed yeah. samurai Irish guy, dude gives me set vibes. Yeah. Oh, fa Abel uh, Fowler. Fowler, yeah. 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 Guys, if you... <laughs> I don't care if you watch our reactions or not, to be honest. If you have not yet seen Blue Eye Samurai, I Go watch that. fucking recommend the shit out of it. It yeah. is one of... Um, we have a couple more reactions that will come up, and we finished it but to get ahead for our editor. We're trying to ease up on Brandon, because uh, he we, we dumped a bunch of shit on him. So, um, But watch Blue Eye Samurai. It really is so good. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, they make a the plan, they split up, and that's kind of the end of part one. We get a little chapter 13 with Marsh... Where Marsh is just like, you know what? The only thing I can do is betray the, uh, is is be such a good little boy that Ruin thinks that I'm the best boy. I gotta be so the bestest boy. In the moment, because the only thing that's safe is my own thoughts. Yeah. And so the moment that he needs me the most, mm -hmm. he'll think that I'm the bestest fucking boy. And in that moment, I will betray him. And I'm like, you know what, Marsh? Yeah, dude, I fucking love you. Okay, I have a question. Yes. Is I it, have an answer. Is it pronounced omnipotent or omnipotent? Either. Okay, great. I love that for me. I mean, I, I say omnipotent, mm -hmm. um, but omnipotent is something that people say. I think they're wrong, but they're they're not technically wrong. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's like when British people say aluminium, it's and there's choice. no I after the N. And I'm like, where did, where is the neum just coming from? Making, it's just making up uh, sounds. At least, if they said aluminum, I would get it more, but it's the aluminium that doesn't yeah, make any fucking that, sense. Yeah, no, that's fair, that's fair. Um, anyway. Oh, it is actually spelled with an I in Britain. So does that mean in Canada it should also be spelled with an I? Probably, but we do everything wrong here, so. Well, we're just such a weird hybrid, right? Yeah. Like, we can't decide what it should, to, whether to use imperial they or metric. They spell aluminium. 
It's no wonder they're falling apart as a country, to be honest. It's no wonder everyone's falling apart as a country. Don't we have the UK paperbacks? Do we? Is this the British paperback? Um, I actually don't know where I would be able to find... The beginning in the publishing section. What did you get on the book? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I just, like, smudged some ink. I read the Kindle edition, uh, so... Uh, aluminum in here. No, there's no I in aluminum in the book. Yeah. I don't think that this is the British edition. I don't yeah. know that they would sell... That's weird, because they don't spell aluminum, aluminum with an I. At least in the back. Yeah. It says aluminum. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Copy from the British Library, a Hatchet UK company, first published in Great Britain in 2010 by Galanx. Well, there you go. I wonder why aluminum isn't spelled aluminium, then. I don't know. Huh. You're reading the King James Version. <laughs> huh. Okay, well, there you cool. have it. Um, I learned something new. Yeah. Fascinating. Cool. We get to part two. Part two. We made it. Part two. Guys, we made it. Demu. Um, yeah, so we start with Lester Bornis. We're back with our boy. Yeah. Um, Lester Bornis has warped himself. Yeah, he's done some shit. Uh, where, he has uh, become a savant. Yes. Which I think is a fun term for it. Because a yeah. savant, uh, because that's not what a savant is. No, but it's just... It's, a... it's it is there. It is the exact opposite of what a savant is. Why? Because a savant is someone who is just, like, naturally very good at something. Uh, and... Oh, I just thought it was someone who is good at something. A savant is, like, that they... A, a savant, like, picks up something and is just great at it. And th an, an allomancy savant is somebody who uses something so much... That they are not human. So it's kind of like... It, it's... They put in their 10,000 hours, yeah. which is the opposite of what a savant is. Okay, interesting. So I just think it's interesting to use the term that way. Unless I'm like, unless my understanding of the word savant is wrong. But I, I wouldn't describe someone who like spent 10,000 hours working to become a good pianist, a savant. I, it's that like eight-year-old kid that just sits down and is fucking like playing chopsticks and they've never touched a piano before. And you're like, and you're like how? What the fuck? How do you just know that? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um... Yeah. Exceptional aptitude. But, like, I wouldn't say that he has great aptitude. I would say that he worked very hard for it, which is why I wouldn't use the word savant here. Hmm. But anyway, it doesn't matter. All right. Um, it, they, he is a savant now because he is so, he's overdoing it. Yeah. He literally, like, cannot go out in the daytime because it's too bright. He is, uh, so he has, like, Daredevil goggles. He's Daredevil. Basically, Brandon Sanderson created Daredevil. Yeah. And um, you cannot convince me otherwise. This is just Daredevil. Uh, he's Daredeviling around fucking Erto. Uh, he goes to uh, his buddy, Dern, which I thought was Dune for a while. And I was like, fuck, I'm being Duned so hard right now. I'm being Duned. Uh, he, goes, he goes and begs with Dern to, like, get some info. Uh, and then he goes to the citizens' meeting uh, where he... Or no, I think Dern is later. But he goes to the citizens' like meeting to like listen in. And while he's there, he's a little bit creepy towards the citizen's sister. Yeah, look. Lester Bourne is, is like horny as fuck. It's but giving like, me Barry Keoghan and Saltburn vibes. <laughs> yeah, Lester Bourne doesn't actually know how to speak to, to women. No, but he falls in love with every woman he sees. Yeah. Like, Les Sopornis, unfortunately, yeah. is a little bit of a fuckboy. Yes. Uh, 100%. He is the anti-Breeze. Yes. You know what I mean? He's yeah. the exact opposite of Breeze. Mm-hmm. Um, Kid is 19. Yeah. He's horny as fuck. I... 100%. Age doesn't really excuse using your superpowers to spy on women. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, here's the thing. It's not like he's, like, trying to spy on her while she's, like, you know, in her room privately. He's just like, oh, like, she's in the garden. You know, mm -hmm. like, that. Like it, it never felt creepy in that way. If it, Les Morris had gone out of his way to try and, like, you know, watch her while she's in the privacy of her own home, here's, here's, that would feel a little different. Here's the only reason I disagree with you. Okay. Is because of the way that he approached things with Vin. 
it's because this is a pattern. Mm. If if this okay. was if he hadn't been the way that he was to Vin, mm-hmm. and this was the first woman that he treated like this in the series, mm-hmm. then I would be like, oh, this a thousand percent makes sense. Mm, yeah, he has found something he's never seen before. Whereas Les de Bornis, this character, I love him in so many ways. Yeah, but his flaw seems to be that he becomes a little bit obsessive with women without engaging with them he becomes and so he obsessive is, he's only obsessive with women's looks and nothing about them lesa bornis never takes the time to get to know a woman mm-hmm. it is purely him responding to a physical thing about them that he likes yes and yes. so because of that that is what becomes a stalkery when you're when your obsession with another person is purely based on an element of them that is not you getting to know them mm-hmm. that is what is creepy mm-hmm. and that's what so i feel like that's something that people don't understand when you have these men that are like uh, but I'm attracted. I'm not like being a creep. I'm just attracted to her, and I'm like, you haven't tried to talk to her, you have and so no it comes across as creepy because you're only attracted to her body, right? And you, like, if you're not interested in, you know, becoming more attracted to the person and not the body, mm-hmm. then it it gets creepy. And Lesta Bornis's attractions to women is purely visual, and I understand that that's partially probably because of what his superpower is, right? Yeah, he yeah. experiences the world so visually. Yeah. But um, his, it, I think his like flaw is is obsession because he becomes a savant. He because literally. Of this his is obsession. a good point. Johan brings up why why would you want a noble title to impress women? Yeah. Like he's a fuckboy, and yeah, that's okay. 100%. We're allowed to have flaws. His yeah. flaw is just that he's a bit of a fuckboy. Yeah. 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 I'm like, I, you know, yeah, I get it. But it, it is like a, an exaggeration of like you said his superpowers, right? It's it's it makes sense with who he is. As a character. Oh no, a hundred percent. It's not yeah. a. It's not a bad writing. Yeah. To have the character whose expectation from all of his friends is that he be a very good spy, be spying in his regular life as well as his professional life, right? Yeah. It is the way in which the crew modeled him to interact with the world. Yeah. And so it totally makes sense that he's like this. It is just you know it's the, reading the scene. I'm like, oh no, let's the Don't be don't be weird about it. Yeah. Yeah. And he's sure. a little bit. He's just a little bit weird about it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it's not. It's not a. I don't think it's like the worst thing ever. He's yeah. he doesn't act on it in a way that's super gross. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It is just that his flaw seems to be he gets a little bit obsessive with women he thinks are hot. He he gets obsessive without any I, a- everything he yeah, like that's true. pointed towards, he gets obsessive about. That's fair. Yeah. Like I, I think that that is just a part of his personality. The the books just use the way that he is around women to push that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Um Chapter 15, uh, uh, Vin is like, the mists and I have a weird relationship now. Like, we used to be, like, best buds, mm-hmm. and now, like, they kind of, like, swirl around me, and they're not, like, holding me close. It is sort of a Drake relationship where they used to call her on their cell phone late night when they'd need her love. But they don't call not, her on her cell phone anymore. no more. There's a thing in the epigraphs... Epitaphs. I which one is epigraphs. it? Epigraphs. Epigraphs. An epitaph is like is like after a, you die. Yeah, a gravestone, right? Yeah, okay. And there's a thing in the epigraphs where it's like the the mist is of ru uh, not is of ruin, but but ruin's influence has something to do with how the mists react to you. Mm, and so yeah, I think not. like the mists liked Vin earlier on because, because ruin she was, was using her. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Was like pushing her towards the the well of ascension, and so Vin was very susceptible to Ruin's influence. But now she knows what Ruin is, and like that. I think this... they stopped liking her even before that, right? I think that the Mists liked her in the first book. Yeah. When they needed her to kill the Lord Ruler, but I don't think that Ruin thought that Vin was the right person to let go of the power. I think that, and I think that's why really? the Mists and her have such an interesting relationship in the second book. Because I think that Ruin is concerned. I, I got the vibe reading it now that like Ruin doesn't necessarily think Vin is the best person to let him out. See, I thought book two was that like the mist spirit did not like Vin. But the mist spirit and the mist are very different things. Like I'm almost wondering if the mist spirit in a way is preservation. But I think the mist spirit, I think the mists in the second book want Ellen to get into the well. 
Because I think that they view him as being the more selfless of the two of them and the more likely to give away power. Because he spends the entire second book being like, I'm going to give away power, I'm going to give away power. Okay. And then the when Ellen gets stabbed and the Miss Spirit, you know what I mean? Like, I think that there's an element of it where I think that the, I think Ruin would have rathered Ellen get into the well. Because I think that Ruin would, having watched them for that year, right? I think the, the year of the siege, I think that Ruin would look at them and be like, Oh, there's a chance that that girl takes power. There is no chance that boy is keeping that power for himself. I just don't remember the miss pulling away from Vin in book two because literally, like, Ruin is the voice inside of Zane's head, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And is like, I wouldn't tell you to kill Vin because he knows that Vin is going to be the one to free him. I'm just saying that the, the, the her relationship with the mist changes throughout book two, and I think that it, I'm not saying that there's a an, I'm not saying there's a, a strong choice made. Yeah. I'm saying that I think that Ruin spends the second book trying to suss out whether or not Vin is the right person for the job. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I think that it is more of a like th- there, there's so much interplay in the second book of Vin feeling like the mists have like almost two personalities and the Miss Spirit's like this third entity in that. And I think that it is Ruin trying to suss out which of them is the best person to lead to the well. I don't know if Ruin is controlling the mist. I think that like because Ruin Ruin is the mists. I, I don't think I think that because Ruin can't read people's thoughts, that the mist pulling away from people is going to be a clue for Ruin. Not like it, not the other way around. Oh, I like that. Does that make sense? Johnny Coleman, thank you for the popcorn. Um, Johnny Coleman, thank you. Like, I think that that's going to be Ruin's only, like, indication of, like, because he can't know what's going on inside people's head. And so I wonder, mm. I wonder if, like, that's how Marsh is going to get found out yeah. by accident. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, because the mists seem to be, like, a separate, th- I don't know, I don't know. We'll find out. Um, let's keep going, though. Um, Ellen uh, tells Vin that human has caused a disturbance in the force. Right, because her... Like a billion... Yes, her coloss is like, I am... Voices crying human. out and going silent all at once. Yes. Um, and so uh, human goes... Uh, she goes and talks to human because he's, like, hanging out near the camp. And he's like, I am human. She's like, nah, you're not. You are coloss. And he's like, yeah, but, like... But my name you is You and I are the human, same. So. And Vin is like, what do you mean? He's like, well, the mists hate us. You know that. And she's like fuck i do yeah she's like what does that am mean, i a though? coloss am i the am i the one female coloss is this like a smurfette situation oh god oh lord do i have to fuck all the coloss to repopulate our species okay my question do you think that the coloss reproduced with heme allergy because they all have a spike inside of them oh who's doing the heme allergy though good question It's like Saruman. They just like dug a hole underneath. Yeah, yeah. They're just like pulling them out of the Isengard. ground. Isengard. Yeah. 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 They grow them like fucking potatoes. I don't know. It just seems like there's there's a spike inside them and it has to be for like a reason. Mm-hmm. Like maybe, maybe when a coloss dies, they coloss make sure that they get the spikes back so that they can make a new coloss. So the coloss were created with a certain number. No, that doesn't make sense. I don't know. It could. It just doesn't make sense. Like the the yeah. idea that the Coloss would care enough to to continue surviving as a race. Yeah, or to to even just go collect why, their spikes. Well, here's the thing. I think that's why they don't <clears throat> give a fuck about killing one another. Like they're so nonchalant about it. Is they're like, okay, well now I take the spike and I go make a new Coloss, and it's probably the same Coloss that just mm. grows over and over and over again in a different flesh puppet. Brando said the human was his choice for a human character in a Muppets Mistborn adaptation. That's very funny. Uh... Oh my god, I want that so bad. You know who should be? Okay, let's do this. No, but that's gonna, gonna be, be a video. It's gonna be you. I'm gonna make that video. I'm gonna recast, I'm gonna cast the entirety of Mistborn as Muppets. Great. Because there's some obvious ones, right? Like, Marsh is definitely Sam the Eagle. Um... Oh my god, what's the orange Muppet with the big glasses? That's Les the Bornis. Who's Vin? All Rianne is Miss Piggy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? That's good. Breezy! Yeah, no, I hate that. Breezy! I hate that. Kermie! 
Um, uh, oh Does my that god. Say Zed is weaker. That's good. You have to make Kermit Breeze then. No, Kermit the has to be Kelsier. Because that's how the Muppets cast everything. Oh, no, because Kermit can't die. Yeah, no, that's, yeah. So it's got to be, it's got to be Breeze. Breeze is Kermit. Uh, I'm just going to soothe your emotions really quick here, okay? Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, yay! Uh, oh, wow, we're going to war. That's crazy. Um, I don't Then the thing you've got to understand Muppets, is that... So can't help with this one. Wow. Oh, my God, I'm going to make this video. That's so funny. Kermit is the Lord Ruler. Oh my god. Wouldn't Miss Piggy be ham? No, that's too obvious. <laughs> that's very funny. Who's Gonzo? Gonzo's the most important Muppet. No! Fucking Kelsier is Gonzo. That's good. Oh my Time. god. Okay, I'm gonna make sure. this video. Guys, wait up. Mistborn Era 1 as the Muppets is coming. Great. Who is the one human though? Are there enough Muppets? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, you sweet summer child. Oh my god. Are there enough Muppets? I don't know. The only thing I know really from the Muppets is the song Moving Right Along. Like, I what do you, how how could you even say that? I'm offended. Yeah, there's like seven Muppets there. What are you talking... Th there are so many Muppets. There's like an ungodly amount of Muppets. Each photo has like ten Muppets in it. I don't see okay. how this is disproving my question. Because they're not all the same Muppets in each photo. There's a so. shit ton of Muppets. Um, I need a photo with like all the Muppets. Like, that's a lot. That is a lot of Muppets. That's like 10 Muppets. It, no, you can't count. That's not 10. That's way more. Sorry, that is 20 Muppets. 20? There's not 20 characters in these books. That's not true. There are. Okay. I'm going to go all of the Muppets. That's a, that is a shit ton of Muppets. Sure. Oh, wait, no, wait, wait, wait. But if we, oh, wait, if Kermit is Breeze, then Statler and Waldorf can't be Breeze and Ham, which I think is hilarious. Statler and Waldorf are Straff and Set. That is good. That's pretty good. Statler and Waldorf sieging Luthadel in movie two would be amazing. Rolf is Dachshund, absolutely. Oh my God, you guys, this is great. There's so much good shit here. The problem is who plays Vin? Um, the the dumpster one, the trash can. Oh no, we're not adding Sesame Street in. Oh. They are Muppets, but they're not the Muppets. Sure. So so the thing you have to understand about Muppets, right, mm -hmm. is that there's three kinds of Muppets. There's the Muppets, which are members of the Muppet like group, the entertainment group, uh -huh. and then there are Muppets, which are puppets that are not in the Muppets, but they are Muppets, right? So, like, the Sesame Street gang, like, they're Muppets, the race, but they're not within the Muppet gang. Then there are humans who are members of the Muppets, but they are not Muppets. Muppets lore goes deep, y'all. Anyway, so, the Hero of Ages. Um, cool. Vin is the human? Vin, could, Vin uh... being the human would be fun. Yeah, our zoo, same. What? <laughs> the monsters uh, from the labyrinth are Muppets, but they're not the Muppets, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Then um, uh, we're with Lestabornis. Lestabornis goes, hey, Dern, I want to go see some people die. And so Dern is like, all right, let's go watch some... Pretty much. ...from some people who... Much like the questioners from Wheel of Time who are like, if your family committed sins seven generations back, you this shall die. This time it's only five, at least. Still too much. Um, too, too much, yeah. And so they far. watch some people get burnt, and Les Bornis is like, fuck this, I can't handle this. I'm going to go yeah. um, tell... <laughs> I'm going to go tell the citizen's sister that I'm going to kill the citizen. Yeah, that's... And she's like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, and then the citizen is like, what are you doing with my sister? Yeah. 
And I was like, wow, Lester Bornis, you got to get better at this shit. Um, and so uh, uh, Lester Bornis um, yeah. gets stabbed through another person and is hemallergied into pewter. But there's so much here, though, right? Because we the find out... The citizen is also an Alan The citizen is, can push, so he might be misborn. Uh, well, might be misborn, but also is a fucking hypocrite. Yeah. Um, and his guards, who are pewter arms, also fucking hypocrites. Because they definitely have noble blood. Yeah, because you can't fucking be an alamancer if you don't have noble blood. Liar. Liar, liar, liar pants on fire. Yeah, fucking liars. Yeah. Um, uh, and so he gets stabbed through somebody else. Yes. Not that actually makes it sound like they took him. In. He, some a guy in front of him gets stabbed. It goes into him, breaks off. Hemallergy. Hemallergy. Because hey. later on, Les Mornes is like, oh, I should take that out. And Kelsey's like, don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, I gave you power, but don't take that out. Yeah. You know, just leave it in there. It's, it's not relevant. Symbolic. Just, yeah. You're going to want to keep that. Don't think about it. I wonder if you take it out, if you would die. I mean, it depends on how violently you take it out. Well, I just mean, like, we know, excuse me, we know that for some of the Inquisitors, like, taking out a specific spike kills them. But not taking out any spike? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Is the size... Excuse me. Is the size of the spike relevant? Um... Or is it just purely aesthetic? I don't know. Don't know. Uh, so then we go back to Elend in Chapter 17, who's mm -hmm. like, Yo, everyone, we all need to go into the mists. Some of you will die. But we can't march it's for four hours a day. It's a sacrifice I am willing to make. <laughs> um, <laughs> Ellen that is Lord Farquaad. Yeah, yeah. Just so you know, this is Shrek. Um, Everything is either Dune, Shrek, or both. Yeah. yeah. There is no Lord of the Rings is Shrek. Um, sure, sure. Shrek is love. Shrek is life. Shrek is love. Shrek is life. Yeah. Mm, um, I took Shrek inside of me. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, and so, yeah, they... Uh, Penetrate? It all comes back to penetration. They go um, into the mists, and a lot of people get sick, including Damu. Yeah. And I was like, if this is how Damu dies... That would have been so sad. I don't know why I care about Damu. He's such a small character, but I am a I ride or die for Damu. If yeah. he dies, I riot. Yeah. Uh, Damu also gives uh, Ellen the whole, like, hey, you, you don't actually believe in my religion. I almost feel like... This isn't cool, dude. And he's like, no, I actually like kind of believe in it more than you'd think. Yeah. And Demu is like, in like a oh, weird shit. way. You oh. Know? Yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah. They're like All they right. believe, but they believe differently. If that makes sense. Oh, and They've... well, the Muppets are definitely Dune. Are you kidding me? The Muppets are yeah. Dune. Kermit the Frog is the Quisette Satarak. <laughs> and Miss Piggy is Shy Halud. Moving right along in search of good times. Do you don't know like the Mupp the, the 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 Rainbow Connection? Uh, that song, yeah. It isn't easy being green. Yeah, no, I've heard those songs. Oh, okay. If you didn't know Rainbow Connection, I would be like. I just don't know them as well as Moving Right Along because I sang that in Young Canadians. So many songs about rainbows, and what's on the other side. So good, so 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 good. I will weep. Lisa Al Gaib. It is written. That meme that's going around right now. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. So good. Um, yeah. That anyways. movie That movie is so much funnier than... The first one? Well, oh no, God. I just mean then it has any right to be Dune. But sure. it's like... like it's Javier great. Bardem is doing a full-on fucking com religious comedy oh, in the middle. Great. It's so good. Dune Part 2, much better it's than Dune Part 1. Definitely recommend. It's it's incredible. I recommend them both, but I I would de I definitely think that it is. I a, think if you're gonna go see two, you probably want to watch, watch one. the first one. But I think that like it's it's a series that is getting better with each installment. So I'm like, oh, is the third one just gonna be a step up from this? Because it's I already great. So. Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> it's gonna be hard because it's weird. Yeah. But because um, normally the middle one is the tough one, so I'm, yeah. I'm hopeful. I think they know what they're doing. Muppets are Star Wars in a Dune ripoff. Sure. Yeah. There you go. See, it all comes back to Dune. Um. Uh, so yeah, uh, sixteen. They they realize that exactly sixteen percent of people are getting sick. Yes. Uh, and they're like, that has to be relevant. What does sixteen mean? Okay. Do you know what it means? Because I don't fucking know. I don't. Is there some kind of like, like um, what's like physics thing that's like sixteen percent is like? Oh, is there like number? a? Is it like a like Fibonacci thing? Is there like a like Maybe. perfect equation thing that's sixteen? I don't know. I don't know. It. I don't know. It seems. I'm like just glad it's not 14 because that would be too much for me. 
That'd be too much. Guys, if you don't watch our Dragonlance campaign, that makes no sense to you. But that, honestly, are there exactly 16 Allomantic Metals? I thought it was 14. Um, but I don't remember. Yeah. Wait, no, there's a, it says in the back of the book, like it lists them. Well, oh, no, 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 don't read the, don't read the back of the book. For the book, we're not done yet. I, that's how I found aluminum. Because they like give, um, Spoilers, here babe. we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Yeah. Fuck, so it can't be that. No, it's not that. Um. They're saying don't look, so don't look. Don't look. Don't look. It's too late. I've looked twice. Um, we cut over to um, Says it. Uh, they are heading back towards Luthadel before heading up to Urto. And Says Ed's like, yo, I gotta go no, your toe. away. What? Nothing. <laughs> We're at like two hours and four minutes, and yeah. you want to derail me for your toe? No, I, I didn't mean anything by it. It just came out. It fell out of my mouth. <laughs> This is uh, why our show's so long. Remember the cannot. If, if you and I could pay attention to anything, this show would be an hour. Wrong. <laughs> Incorrect. Not true. Uh, Johnny, thank you for that super chat. It's the perfect ratio of penetration to fellatio. Wait, but which is the percentage? Like 16% fellatio or 16% penetration? Also. Because I think depending on the is day. Is that how you spell fellatio? Because <laughs> I don't know. What, I don't know. I is it how you... You know what? It, no, that that's not how the word... When, I don't know what that is. Because either that's something else. Or Johnny very much needs to look up the spelling of the word fellatio. I've never seen that word spelled before. I, yeah. Fellatio. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's Felicia. Bye, Felicia. Sorry, not to shame. As uh, a dyslexic, Phil. as a dyslexic, I should not shame anyone else's spelling. <laughs> it's Phil. It actually. was just very. It was very funny to me that you got almost none of it right. Wow. Yeah. You know what? They got it right enough that I could read it. So Johnny, oh, no. you you got the you got you got the you got the like. Um, it sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. The way that you spelled it, a thousand percent makes sense. Yeah. 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 See, there but you, you go. can't you can't spell things almost right to me as a dyslexic because then get I confused. get confused. Yeah. You guys, you guys have to be right <laughs> because I will be wrong. That's important. That is facts. You know what I mean? Like if if you guys fuck up spellings, I'm going to gaslight myself into thinking that I've always read things wrong because there's a chance there is a chance that I have. I've just never read the word fellatio, so you've never seen the word fellatio written down? No. No. Wow. I don't read smut. It's just why, yeah, you're so good at it. So I would have thought you would have like studied. Just researched how to spell it to be yeah. good at it. No, no, this, this, I'm a savant. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. Oh, I love you so much. That was a perfect callback. Yeah, yeah. That yeah, was yeah, an I'm absolutely perfect callback. Pretty proud of that one. Um, anyways, uh, we get the, we get the epilogue thingy, ep, epigraph, fuck, <laughs> these words, I hate these words so much. We, 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, we get the epilogue thingy. No, sorry, the epigraph, I, I, I really hate those words. This show's devolving um, into madness. Where it talks about, like, <laughs> how Rashek really, like, fucked things up. But, like, the hero of ages thinks that he did a pretty good job despite it all. <laughs> it is pretty much uh, everything. Yeah. He's like, mm. oh, he saved the world, but, like, he's the one who fucked it up in the first place. So, like, props He to gets you, half, credit. <laughs> half credit. Half, yeah, 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 half yeah, credit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He didn't get the answer right, but he showed the work. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. James Ross, welcome back to the nerd table. This show will never be an hour long because we will constantly try to derail it. That's I don't true. even know if you need to try and derail it, to be honest. Oh my god! Um, guys, we don't need you guys to derail our lives. We're we very derail good each at other. Derailing one another, yes, yes. Good at derailing. Good at railing. We just, yeah. you know, we, we crush just lots both. of rails. Um, but we're not on them. No, there are no <laughs> rails. 
There's the, the, no, there are lots of rails. We're just not on them. We're just like jumping around in between them. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, chapter 18, um, Sazed Breeze, Alrian, and uh, Gordel. I literally just said this. There, Sazed yeah. goes to his people, and they yeah. live at the pa- pits of Hat Sin, which seems so bleak, but like makes but, sense. Yeah, uh, they seem to be doing okay. They made Guys, it nice. The terrorist people, they're doing all right. Yeah. Sazed comes in, and they're like, oh my god, Lord. And he's like, no, that's not, no, not me. Not it's like me. when a new like a company takes over a building in New York that has been a shithole for a long time. Uh, and then they make it nice and then jack up the rent 400%. I mean, to be fair, the terrorist people aren't charging anyone yet. Can I tell you guys a crazy thing? If you had to guess, no. <laughs> the company that I paid rent to in New York City, the company that owned the building I lived in last oh. in New York City, I lived there for years. Mm-hmm. Do you know what it is? You have told me, yeah. I paid rent for years to a company whose name was Shamco. Yeah. Yeah. Because nothing invites... The trust of your customers. Quite like writing a check for thousands of dollars and then writing the word sham company at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. And that it was, was just because it was the guy's name. Oh, his name was Sham. His oh, last name was like that. Sham something. Um, They're gentrifying the pits of hats. But yeah, it was, uh, I paid money to Shamco each month, mm. which just never got old. I mean, rent is a sham, so. Uh, and they're all like, oh my god, it's the king of the terrorist people says that. And he's like, you guys gotta it's fucking like, Please chill. Don't, you, don't you, call me you that. You guys have to fucking... God, we have 13 more chapters to talk. 14 and? more chapters to talk about. We gotta move. Okay. Sham Ilarial. Uh, Lester Bornis. He wakes up. He's in a cell. He's like, oh my god, wait, what the fuck? Oh, the building's on fire. And oh, he yeah, he's, he's on... He's yeah. being executed. And then Kelsier's in the flames being like, yo go to the desk and he's like okay he's like drink that and he's like and he's like i I, there's no tin he's like you don't need tin you need pewter this place belonged to a pewter arm and he's like i can't burn pewter he's like you can now motherfucker you can uh and then he escapes yeah pretty much boom um chapter 19 done uh is ruined there's no way it's kelsier yeah no it's no No. it's it's definitely either ruin or preservation but i'm gonna go i'm gonna i'm gonna assume that hemallergy being a power because I think it's the last epigraph is like hemolurgy is a power of ruin. Yeah. I think that now that he's been hemolurged, which... Hemolurged. What? Oh. What? That's why ruin was able to talk to Zane. Zane heard he voice. Because he had a spike. Yeah. So is the earring in Vin's ear a connection to ruin? Well, Vin has never heard ruin. But, 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 the earring was her mom's earring yeah and her mom heard voices and killed her daughter that is true is the earring a hemallergy spike um i guess if the size doesn't matter (laughs) what i'm being serious i know i know but you can't say the size doesn't matter seriously size doesn't matter oh my god wait so if you're penetrated by metal can ruin get into you Wait, but here's the thing. Does the does that metal have to make the hole? Because if her ear was already pierced, like if she like pierced her ear with it, that would make sense. But if you just stick That's any piece of book. metal inside a hole in your body and you can talk to God. <laughs> <laughs> we have discovered orgasms. <laughs> Anderson's like euphemism for an orgasm. Oh, is this why they make metal butt plugs? It's not for the weight. It's so that you can so speak you can to God. Speak to God. Yeah, you can speak to ruin. <coughs> oh my God! Jesus famously had spikes. Boom, boom, but boom. It, yeah, that's why he thought he was the son of God because God was talking to him and been like, "Kill him." Oh my God, that's wild. Uh, that's incredible. What but, powers hmm. did Jesus? Oh my God, did Jesus get the power to resurrect from the spikes? Was it all just hemallergy? Well, he drove spikes and he penetrated. Oh my god. And then what happened after he died from the spikes before he resurrected? He went to America and created Mormonism. (laughs) You know? (laughs) Brandon Sanderson was created by hemallergy in Jesus Christ. Yes. Guys, I fucking solved it. I figured it all out. So when is Vin gonna start talking to God? 
Ellen needs some lessons. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Ellen she needs to penetrate many... Ellen first. Yeah, because Ellen hasn't been with too many women. He doesn't, like, get how it all works yet. But Vin will talk to God wow. at some point. Yeah. Uh, Josh um, Timko says, yes, it was, a, it was a stone table, not metal, so it disproves Mormonism. The stone had metal in it. Could be. And the, the, the little gold pieces that Joseph Smith used to read the stone tablet were metal. Yeah, yeah gold. There you go. <laughs> it's been Guys, proven that Brandon out. Sanderson has 18 spikes from lesser <laughs> authors. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh... <laughs> That's why George R. R. Martin no. stopped writing Game of Thrones oh. because someone stabbed threw him into Brandon Sanderson and gave his ability to write to Brandon right, Sanderson. Right, right, right. And that's why he's been sitting on Game of Thrones for so yeah, long. Yeah, he's like, I can't finish it. I don't know how to but do But Brandon this Sanderson writes 12 books a year. He goes on vacation and accidentally writes a novel. He collects authors. He, he's, he is thanos author's powers through hemology. Wow, that's brilliant. Oh my God, he must be stopped. Wait, <laughs> guys, we have to take down Brandon Sanderson. Brandon this Sanderson man is, must die. He is ruined. I'm Brandon Sanderson. I love your books, but, but I... But like this too much. I think that I'm... Hero of the Ages, and I think that I have to come kill you. Yeah, we figured it out. Yeah. Although, here's the thing. And release, your, and release can, your authorial powers back to other authors. But Ruin can alter text. So are we being manipulated Is he writing books, Ruin? or is he just altering text on paper, thus creating books faster than a normal author could write or them? Or is Brandon Sanderson susceptible to Ruin's influence, which is why he writes so much, because Ruin is like, ah, oh, yes, keep going, keep going. People are going to love this but shit. But does he even write books, or does he just type out words, and then Ruin makes them into books later? Ruin's the editor, actually, and is like, <laughs> yeah, I'm not a little bit of this, a little bit of that. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> this is my religion now. I'm going to clip out this section of the podcast and put it on our YouTube channel with like a dark photo of Brandon Sanderson. Just with, like red eyes. And the text at the bottom of the thumbnail is just going to say the dark truth about Brandon Sanderson oh and God. just post this section of well, the podcast. Well, it's why he like can do, it's why he can do all of these like Kickstarters. Oh my God. He just like gets a new spike. <laughs> Guys, I'm going to share a, a video that's a, this clip. And I want you guys all to just share the thumbnail guys, without we have a mission. revealing that it's a joke. You are the missionaries of our newfound we need religion. To like, we need to push this c conspiracy theory. Yeah, yeah. Because it's so funny. This is this is the Darth Brandon era. The the Darth Brando Sando. I can't tweet it at Brandon. Because if I tweet my video at him, it looks weird. I need somebody else to tweet at him. Be like, guys, they've got you figured send out. Send it to the Shard cast. Send it to the Shardinators. Send it to send the... Send it to Brandon's editor. Yeah. <laughs> to Brandon's editor. Be like, they've figured you out, okay? You are ruined. You The you, dark truth about Brandon whoever Sanderson. Whoever Brandon Sanderson's editor is, is ruined. That like oh my god that's so funny we're not even done the book yet but we know this for facts uh, yeah. Johnny thank you for that super chat okay so after penetration you start having intrusive thoughts yes that's why you can't masturbate right I like, intentionally have intrusive thoughts after penetration so that I last longer <laughs> I let my brain go wild so that I'm not focused <laughs> on the pleasure in my penis right yeah. right because you're like gotta keep going you know gotta go fast it's not the size it's how it's the length of time. Yeah, but that's not too it. long. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. He's on Reddit. Perfect. There you go. There you go. Hopefully, Brandon Sanderson. Hopefully, you see this, and hopefully, we we've got it all figured out. Um, I think uh, we're gonna be the first. Man, mm -hmm. that is the funniest conspiracy theory we've come up with yet. Have we come up with other conspiracy theories? Yeah, we came up with a couple during Wheel of Time. Yeah, don't remember. Yeah, it's because we talk on camera for up to 12 hours a week. Yeah, which is why and I we can't remember literally everything we say. erase everything that happens <laughs> as soon as the camera turns off. My yeah. brain goes, delete. Because here's the thing, the information is on video for me to go back and acquire if I need it. Mm -hmm. Which sometimes I do. Okay, so this is 2.17. Okay, so we're on the two hour mark of the recording. Great. Were we talking about that for 17 minutes? No. No, I'm just saying that that'll, that helps me find it faster. Great. Because I'm going to put this up today. Yeah. We're also putting up another video today. Don't we can't forget that. What? The level ups. It already is live. Oh. It went yeah. live at one. All right. Well, we'll redirect everyone over there. Later. Yeah, we'll share it. Um. Anyways, YouTube is just my metal mind. 
Yes, exactly. Because I don't, I literally don't remember anything that I say. I have to go back and watch myself say it. Um, okay. Exactly. What are we talking about? Okay, so exactly. Tensoon yes. is in his prison cell in the middle of the lobby of uh -huh. uh, Trump Tower. And he's just chilling there. Mm -hmm. And Milan comes over. I think Milan is his daughter? She's several generations younger than him, no. so I don't think... Like the they have a, don't have children. I know, but they have a worse age gap than Breeze and Ariane do, because it's like 300 years. Yes, I but... I think she's, she's either fifth or sixth generation. Yeah, but like like you said, once you get past a certain like maturity age, like who gives a fuck? That's true. Like, that you is know, true. A 30-year-old and a 100-year-old? 600 years old. Matt, whatever. Who gives a fuck? Like, a 30, 30 and a 100 is weird. It is weird. For humans. It's weird. Because <laughs> why are you dating a 100 years old? <laughs> Uh, for that, for that sweet, sweet uh, prenup. Um, I nope. If if you're if you have a prenup, you fucked up. No, the prenup is I get everything. That's called marriage. That's just the that's the normal way. Maybe Milan has like some crazy wealth and is like, no, no, I need to protect myself. That 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 ATM cash. That yes, uh, she actually she has the ATM. I mean, they pay Condra an ATM, so, and I don't think they can use it for anything unless that's how they make the. Um, oh, that's how they make new Condra. No, 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 it's not how they make new Condra. It's how oh. they make the um, the blessings, the blessings of different things. See, I thought you had to have a blessing to become a Condra because it seems like the Mist Wraiths get stabbed like. But the blessings have style. to be a thing, right? Yeah, because, yeah. So they pick one. So, but I think maybe the blessings are made out of ATM. Here's the thing. You would think that it would be different metals for different, like, Maybe. abilities, right? Like, for, like, potency and... I, I don't remember. I don't Milan remember the is his adopted them. daughter. Oh, cool. Okay. But, like, they don't have children, so I don't really I think know that how I, that functions. Because it's not society. about, like... it's Because adopted, first of all, they don't fuck. They're, they're, Milan is, like, taken under his wing. She is, like, the person that he taught how to make bones into people. I th That's probably a very intimate process. He is, he is did that, but I don't... I don't know. This is why I find the Chondra stuff very fascinating. I don't feel like I have a great grasp on it. But anyway, yet. she visits, is like, you should start a revolution. And he's like, no, I can't, because I, it's not what I'm here to do. And she's like, well, fuck you, old man. Yeah, fucking coward. And that's kind of it. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, wait, fuck, they're probably listening. Um, I would hate to be a dog again. That would be so, that, that would, would be, be so, so bad. bad. Oh my, can you imagine if they made me be a dog again? Super terrible, very embarrassing. Oh, I would, I would just, I would just hate that. Oh, please don't make me put those bones on. Please don't make me take that bone in my body. Um, bone daddy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so chapter 21, Demu is good. He survives. We're all, Tensoon everything's is okay. Bone daddy. Tensoon, Tensoon is the, is the boner champ. Tensoon is the boner champ. Mm -hmm. There you go. Remember that? That's, God, that was so long that's, ago. That was a long time ago. I was the boner champ. Mm -hmm. For those of you who don't know, uh, when I beat the Hydra in Hades on stream, inexplicably, I just yelled, I am the boner champ. I thought that was when you were helping Jeffers in his blindfolded playthrough. Didn't he ask me to help him because I was the boner champ? Oh, maybe, no, maybe it was, maybe it was from the Jeffers thing. I don't remember. That was so long ago. Because I talked him into beating it blindfolded, and so I called myself the boner champ. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember. I don't know. Twerk has a mug. That's all I remember. Um, there was merch for we a We did sell time. boner champ merch. Yeah. I have a boner champ shirt somewhere. Do you? Yeah. Oh, I haven't seen it. Huh. Um, okay. okay, so Demu's alive. Um, Demu didn't die. That's very important. Yeah. Uh, Ellen uh, is worried that he's like becoming too much of a badass, and Vin is like, "Nah, you're good. Yeah, you're not that cool. Yeah. <laughs> Shut the fuck up." Um, Vin is like, "Oh, Ruin can't like read thoughts, so like he can't know everything. But like, how do we fight him when we can't like plan anything because he'll know exactly what we're planning? We gotta keep that shit to ourselves." And this is where they have the long conversation about sixteen, and that it might be relevant later on in the book. Uh, chapter yes. twenty-two. Seized and the Terrace Elders have a long combo, and he's like, you guys need to get this place ready because there might be more refugees. You guys need to, like, prepare for more peeps. Yeah, yeah. Um, We're going to probably have to take in some people. And also, I do have to leave. By the way, are the mists killing y'all? No, no, we're fine. That's, no? That's, that's so silly. Why would the mists kill us? Why? 
Why indeed? Why just the Ska and the Nobles, but not the Terrace? Is it because, Maybe because they're the people of the Hero of Ages and his Hero of Agesness protects them? Well, but also the people of Rashek. And so, like, maybe Rashik yeah. built in an immunity to the mists, but didn't anticipate it building oh. into all the terrorist people? Right, because Rashik planned in advance yeah. for the possibility that Ruin, like, might escape, right? So if the Lord Ruler was like, yeah, make me immune to the mist killing people, then it stands to reason that maybe that happened to all terrorist men. Like, there's something about the terrorist people that yeah. makes them immune to it as well. Shim Slady is really funny here. Uh, says it'd be like, I am the Synod. Except he's not. He can't accept his destiny. I know. Which is so funny because he is the Hero of Ages. Uh, chapter 23, mm -hmm. Lestabornis, uh gets a flashback episode. Um, and Someone called him Lusty B in the chat earlier. Lusty and that was, that was very funny. Uh, we find out that Lestabornis is uh, East slang speak for I have been abandoned. <laughs> yeah. That's fucking rough, buddy. Yeah, apparently Lestabornis. Um, Isn't his name. It's just a name he gave himself when he was like, I fuck my family. They wanted to kill me because I'm an Alamancer, so yeah. fuck them. But Clubs saved his life. Yeah. Which was very sweet. Clubs is the best. Yeah. He's also dead. So sad. Very sad. Chapter 24. <laughs> this always happens. We run out of time and then we just like breeze through shit. Well, because here's the, the problem. We talk about future stuff in the beginning. Yeah, that's perfect. And part of so. It. Yeah. We're like, oh, we've already done that. Uh, chapter 24. Tensoon is like, should I accept this punishment or not? Should I escape? Yeah. Uh, and then they give the Tensoon the wolf body. And he's like, nah, fuck it. I'm going to escape. Yeah. And so he's like, let's get ready. He's getting ready to rumble. Yeah. Uh, it, let's just do the escape now. Let's just get through it now. Basically, sure. they, they take him into the tr chamber. And he's like, nah, I... Don't accept your punishment. I'm not here for punishment. I came here to give you guys info. I'm fucking out. Yeah, and they're like, fuck you firsts. Fuck. And so he uh, brings up the fact that he is basically like the Olympic athlete version of a Chandra because yeah. he had to chase Venera Luthadel in a fucking dog body. Yeah. And he's like, guys, I got so good yeah. <laughs> at this. I also know exactly where to like pack in the muscles yeah. to, to be the strongest, goodest boy that they're ever goodest boy. And while I was too thin to create a good human body, yeah. I was too, I, I gave me enough chonk to make this dog body. Tensoon got that dog in him, El Gage. You are right. Yeah. Tensoon's got that dog in him. You know what I mean? And so he's like, I make the best dog bodies. Mm -hmm. The best. And because you are also up your own asses, you have no fucking clue. So he well, jumps Kampar all... and he smashes Kampar's crystalline structure to we pieces. Didn't, uh, we didn't talk about these like true bodies. Oh, we didn't talk about the true bodies. That the, the Chandra are using, which what? are like elements of the world but like yeah not because apparently like melon's like wooden body is like weird but like the crystal is not weird i don't know how that works <laughs> judgment i know you, i know what you're trying to say but i love we need new types of popcorn emojis like camel corn and cheese corn and now i want to know what camel corn is yeah what the fuck is camel corn i've never heard of that Oh, wait, no, there's an R. I'm just dyslexic. Ca oh, Carmel. no, it's so small. Yeah. Yeah. There's an R in there. Okay. I, I was like, camel corn. I'm also dyslexic. What is camel corn? I was like, yeah, no, oh, wait, corn. what's camel corn? Camel corn is fucking... You go through, you go through the, the popcorn and you only pull out the things with two humps. <laughs> My lovely lady lumps. Check it out. Um, I met a girl down at the disco. She said, "Hey, hey, hey, let's go." You can me. Defeated by dyslexia, it is. It is my. It is the final boss of my life. Uh, and so yeah, Tensoon escapes out into. Yeah, he's um, like, fuck you guys. Out into the world as yeah. the Irish Wolfhound. I don't know why I put Irish in there. It's probably I'm not I'm just Irish. literally imagining the cutscene in The Lion King where it's like da 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 da, da and it's like Tensoon running towards Vin. <laughs> and he gets up and like you know like the world is like fucking falling apart and misty and shit he goes and outside like... and he just can't see anything it, it, it's, <laughs> it is that scene but you can't really see what's going on because the mists are blocking it uh yeah mm -hmm. that's the cutscene that I need chapter 25 Ellen's army gets to Fadrix mm -hmm. uh and they're they're checking it out the trees have all been cut down 
Uh, much like Universal trying to punish the SAG after strikers last year in Los Angeles. Uh... <laughs> deep cut, deep cut. Deep cuts. Uh... Wow. <laughs> I've, uh... been wait- I've been sitting on that since yesterday. Well I was like, oh, well fuck, done. it's just like... Yeah. Um, tree law. Tree law. I got I got to learn so much about tree law because of that. I know. That was fascinating. Uh, and so they're like getting ready and they're planning and they're like, Vin, go scout. Uh, and Ellen's like, I'll come with you. And Vin's like, no, no, it's okay. Hey, I, hey, like you're getting, I love you. You're getting better, but absolutely not. I love you, but like, no. But you're loud. It's kind of like you being like, I think I'm going to learn to drive this year. And I'm like, mm, maybe not. Well, okay, but the problem is I do actually need to learn how to drive. I know, but you're so bad at it. I've barely driven. I know, but I know, I know, but that one time scared the shit out of me. Me too. <laughs> That's why it's a problem. <laughs> I needed to not be scary. <laughs> Uh, anyways, um, Set is like here's a list of people who may or may not help you, but probably will. Um. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, we go back to Lessa Bornis, mm-hmm. who is uh, a pewter arm now. And so he's yeah. like, I'm going to go get a drink and like listen in on people. Yeah. But everyone and then recognizes they recognize him. him. They're all like, wait, aren't you Lessa Bornis? And he's like, ah, oh, fuck. Aren't you that guy that just burnt to death? And so but before we get that moment, they are talking about how the citizens kind of fucked up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like they're not, they're not about this whole citizen business. Yeah, and how, like, the the whole, like, genealogy thing's going a little bit too far. A little bit. Little you bit know, five generations. A little bit too far. <coughs> uh, so we cut back, chapter 27, to Vin sneaking into Fadrick's. Uh, and she goes and talks to Slow Swift, mm-hmm. which uh, is qu- quite the name. It sounds like you just, like, literally put two words together. Um, like... This scene, uh, this might not make sense to anybody else, but this scene reminded me so much of... Um, uh, fucking. Good talk. What's the lead character in Hunger Games' name? Katniss. This is this scene reminded me so much of the scene between Katniss and Snow in the Rose Garden in the third book. Okay. In 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 just in the way that he is very much. Just just in his tone towards her and the way in which he is just fucking telling her about herself. Like, the, his demeaning tone, but also, like, kind of revealing the plot of the book. It was very fascinating to me. And I, I found the, the like, the, the it's very different, obviously, because they have a different relationship. But yeah, yeah. The but scene the just reminded of me it. of that scene a lot. No, I get that. Samantha A., thank you for that super chat. <laughs> thank you. For Doesn't the car chat. car and drive itself only on the highway? On the highway, yeah. yes. Um, You got to get it to the highway, Yeah. unfortunately. You uh, have to be willing to put your foot on the gas at some point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, you do have to put you you do have to put gas into the car, which Claris uh, does not know how to do. Mm, don't worry about I it. I would literally have to teach you how to pump gas. Yeah. You don't, I don't know, know how, how to pump to do gas. That. No, I have no idea. That's so crazy to me. Uh, My mom taught me how to pump gas before I could drive because she didn't want to stand outside in Canadian winter. That's hilarious. and so I would be like ten years old pumping the gas. I, you know what? If I had kids, that's the shit I would make them do as well. That's why we're not having kids because you'd be a terrible mom oh i trust me i am very aware very so many aware. so many married couples are like oh my god you're gonna be the best mom like they like call each other and we're both like you would be terrible at raising children no, no. <laughs> and we both do accept not, it do not allow do not pass go do the, not collect the amount i would be like you cannot touch my legos <laughs> these are not toys this Rivendell Don't set was seven hundred dollars. Do you know do how not, much that is? Do not touch my Rivendell set. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no children. Uh, so yeah, so like they have an interesting conversation where they they're you know, Slow Swift is like, oh, what's his face? The the Inquisitor guy, mm-hmm. not Inquisitor, Obligator guy. He's not that bad yeah. actually. You know, he's doing some some good shit. Everything's kind of stagnant. We just kind of went back to everything the way it was before, but like that works for me. <laughs> and Vin is like, okay, so slavery. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna fix that. Yeah, because it's bad. It's bad. Slavery is not good. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I feel like at some point we're gonna read a book where I don't have to say that slavery is bad. 
But it is not this book. I think I think chat is on the same page with us this time. No, I know. I you know. know, I think we weeded out the week. Um, there, it's so wild that there are like usernames that I could call out and be like, these people think slavery is not a bad thing. Um, because they let me know over and over and over again in multiple different places, including paying me money to be like, hey, slavery is not actually bad. Wild. Uh, yeah, it's just wild. historical, but it's not bad. It's, yeah, it just is a thing. And yet there's a reason why we keep eliminating it. Uh, we'll figure it out eventually. You know, I think it'll come to us. It's almost like it's just bad. Yeah. In general. Um, Vin goes to a second informant and then gets scared. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, nah, I got a bad feeling about this. And she just fucking leaves. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and she finds out that uh, there's still balls. Yeah. Being held in Fadrix. And so she's like, wait, I have a plan. This is very much the like third book trying to reference the thing from the first book. I fucking love it. And this I love it. This is my it. favorite part. Uh, so Vin goes home. Yeah. Vin is like, I think we should um, sneak into a ball. And Ellen's like, oh, you know what? Okay, let's fucking do it. And then Vin is like, <gasps> I don't have a dress. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a tragedy, which I relate to very hard. Um, never been to a ball, but... You've never been to a ball? No. Huh. Have you been to a ball? Yeah. A few. What? Like, I would consider, like, prom a ball. Oh, I wouldn't. Really? That's kind of what it is, right? I mean, I guess. No one um, really, like, danced at my... Samantha prom. says it's almost like you know where Sanderson stands on slavery in his writing. I know, it's almost like that. It's, yeah, isn't it crazy? Thank you for that super chat. It's not, he didn't have one of his favorite characters marry the queen of slaves. Um, <laughs> let's, uh, let's get into chapter 28. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Vin is like, yo, Ellen, I'm back. Here's the thing. We're going to go to a ball, first of all. Oh, fuck. I don't have a dress. Wait. Oh, wait. I don't have a dress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, I think that the mist spirit was following me. Yeah. So weird. Good old um, Misty's back. It literally just disappeared. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Good old Misty. Gotta love him. Uh, was the first to penetrate Ellen. So uh, when Ellen uh, and Vin finally do get into a little bit of pegging play, a little bit of strap on action, mm -hmm. he will be reminded that uh, Misty got there first. Misty got there first. Misty got there first. Misty came first. Um, <laughs> That's a t shirt. <laughs> Misty came first. <laughs> But people would Everyone think would think Pokemon. it's a Pokemon thing. Um, here's the weird thing. This is why I think maybe the Mist Spirit is. Do you think the Mist Spirit looks like Misty from Pokemon? God, I hope not. Um, that would be very, <coughs> very confusing. No, I think the Mist Spirit might be preservation. Don Kamar says, "I only ever choke when I get to the balls." Jeez. That's impressive. Very impressive. Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think it might be preservation, just because. It, like, tried to stop Vin from, like, giving away the power. And it also, like, is, like, fa it, 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 it feels weaker than Ruin does somehow. I don't, I, don't, I don't know what that means, really. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but it also doesn't feel related to, like, the sickness. I don't know. I also love that the, the, this is where we get the moment of her being, like, the reason why I knew that I wanted to marry you after I killed your brother um, was because after he stabbed me in the boob and kissed me, it was very weird. Was because you trust me, and so I need you to trust me because I can't say shit out loud because Ruin can hear us, and yes. Ellen does. Um, also, uh, yeah. I oh my god, there's so many things I highlighted this section. Oh, that I just haven't been bringing up, which is dumb. But that let is me a tragedy. Why would you do that? There's some there. There are a couple of things I wanted him to mention, and this gets to one of them. This is maybe my favorite line that Brandon Sanderson has ever written. Ever. That's bold yeah. seeing as you've read three of his like eight hundred and seven. I said novels. my favorite of the ones I've read, but. Um, I'm teasing. Uh, one is early on with Demu wearing the la the lance. And he's like, it seemed odd to her that the weapon that had killed Kelsier would become the symbol of his followers. Which is just a direct criticism of people being, Christians being so obsessed with the cross. Yeah. Which is so strange to me. And like, I agree. I get that it's like the symbol of the moment he died for the sins. But like, it's still very strange to me that. This is how he the, died. Like, there's so many crosses everywhere, and I'm like, that's the thing Jesus was hoisted up on. Yeah. Like, I get that Jesus didn't have a lot of physical symbolism, but anyway. But they th maybe, 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 maybe there's a reason for that. Yeah. Um. The, the, there's a point where Ellen says, uh, he was emperor, Ellen said. We may not have liked his rule, but I can understand him somewhat. He wasn't spiteful. He wasn't even evil, exactly. He created a thousand years of slavery, Ellen. He was evil. Uh, and then the, the quote goes on with, he just got carried away. It's a really weird way to talk about slavery. Uh, besides, he resisted this thing that we're fighting. 
But he still created slavery. Ellen is wrong here, and I just wanted to point that one out. That's, you know what, that's fair. Um, but I think it, mean, it might be showing that, like, it, they better, like, win this thing fast mm-hmm. so that Ellen can get back to his roots and not be apologizing for the Lord Ruler. <laughs> While she is stealthily going into the city, talking about how she keeps her flapping fabric to a minimum. As always, she wore no metal, save for the coins in her pouch and an extra vial of metals in her sash. I was like, oh, fuck. That pouch of coins would be so fucking loud. What do you mean you're trying to be stealthy? But then she has sound dampened coins. I know. Cool. Right? I so like that they, a lot. You don't hear them when like they clink around in your pocket or when you toss them down. Love that. Yeah. Very cool. My final thing. This is the thing. This is my favorite line. From the Mistborn series so far. Um, Vin. In our short three years together, to kill not only my god, but my father, my brother, and my fiancé, that's kind of like a homicidal hat trick. It's a strange foundation for a relationship, wouldn't you say? I do love that, yeah. In our short three years together to kill not only my god, but my father, my brother, and my fiancé, that's kind of like a homicidal hat trick. Mm -hmm. It kind of isn't, because a hat trick is three and you named four things. But also, Vin has probably killed more of Ellen's siblings than she knows. This implies that hockey exists in the final empire. Why? Because a hat trick is when you score three goals in a hockey game. Wouldn't that have come from... Wouldn't the hat trick in terms of hockey have come from something else? Because there's no hats in hockey. No, it's because when someone scores three goals, everyone throws their hat on the ice. What? That's why it's called a hat trick. Hat Hat trick trick is also in soccer? Oh, okay. You're going to lose your hat. Like, why would you get rid of it? You throw it on the ice out of respect for someone throwing... So you're like, I'm just going to give up my hat? Like, what a waste. That's so much garbage. Oh, it actually comes from cricket. So cricket exists originally in, in 1858 to describe H. H. Stevenson taking three wickets with three consecutive deliveries. Amazing. Uh, Johnny Coleman, I do want to say thank you for that super tri- super <coughs> chat. Uh, the spear makes more sense than the cross because penetration is cool. But here's the thing: Jesus was also penetrated on the cross. Interesting. So. I did not know hat trick was outside of hockey. I've o- because I'm Canadian. I've only ever I didn't know. Uh, yeah. Seems like a waste to me. I'm not going to get rid of my hat. Fuck you. I don't care how good you sport. I was thank you for that super chat. Fun fact, Sanderson had to fight his editor to keep this line because of this reason. Interesting. That's very funny. See, I, yeah, it, it's huh. weird because it is four things and a hat trick is three. So it does bug me just a little bit. But the to kill not only my god, but my father, my brother, and my fiance is the funniest way to look at the past three books. Yeah. Or the first two books of the series. To be like, you kind of showed up in my life and then murdered everybody I knew. Yeah. Two and now we're book. married. Here's the thing. There was two in each book. So which are the two people that Ellen is related to that Vin is going to kill in this book? Who's Ellen related to? Oh, the cousins in Fadrex? They're, Vin might kill them. I don't know. Vin might kill them. It, it is wild because it, there's, a, there's a salt burn version of this. Where you're like, oh, Vin orchestrated all of this to murder Ellen's whole family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the conspiracy that Ellen found in book one is actually true. Um, this has just been a whole very elaborate plot to take over <laughs> To Keep take Venture. over Keep Venture. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Oops, I had to kill your god so that I could have your house. <laughs> I just really wanted to be rich, you know? Crazy. Um... Philip says, I'll be honest, I'm with the editor on this one. I'm not really a fan of the, term, the use of the term hat trick here. It just doesn't work because it's four things to me. See, and I didn't know what it Maybe was. Maybe a hat so. trick in the world of Mistborn is four goals in a game. In cricket. They, the, the noble play cricket, for sure. That yeah, there's seems... no sports. One of the things that I always find very interesting about fantasy is that there's never sports. And because they don't want the ska rooting for anything. You would you need to distract a population with something. It, I I am a big Murder. I am a big I am a big proponent that there is no there there would be no society without sports, and so I find fantasy worlds that have no here's the problem reference though. to them a little a little bit distracting because I go like what are your sports what are your here's the problem though sports make people riot and the Lord Ruler doesn't want rioting. But it's a healthy kind of rioting. It actually... Yeah, burning vehicles and exploding them and lighting shit on fire is very healthy. I don't mean healthy 
in the Very small healthy. scale, I mean healthy in the large scale. It is a release of emotional energy. Mm. Which is which is why Mm-mm. the the Lord mm. I, I I am That's right. Bonkers. It's true though. The Lord Ruler's version of it is that every hundred years he lets all the great houses go to war with each other and murder each other. Yeah. It would be far better if the great houses just fucking rioted for a night because they lost the Super Bowl. <laughs> No, because they have to keep their population down. Well, that's true, yeah. Right? He um, made them Eric less would, no, but, fertile for but a reason. Eric would, and look, as much as I think J.K. Rowling is a fucking tyrant, and I'm so glad that she's being held legally responsible for her transphobia right now, um, Quidditch is a great example of a fantasy world having a sport within it, because it would. You know what I mean? Like, there would be... Do, would gladiator games count as a sport? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. There, it's a it's a very violent and dark sport, but combat sports. combat sports have always existed. Um, Except it's uh, Al- whoever has the best alamancers. <laughs> yeah, sports exist because human beings like to prove physical ability. It's just a thing. Okay. Oh, the rules of Quidditch are insane. Oh yeah, yeah. Quidditch doesn't make any sense. I just never. Quidditch is a solo sport that two people play while six other people do random shit. No, but here's the thing: Ireland wins, but Crumb catches the snitch. Yes, and that is like, I'm I, just statistically that probably happens once every hundred years. Yeah. And so it's like, yeah, there's a chance that everyone, there is a very tiny chance that everyone else matters. But in 99% of games of Quidditch, one per, two people matter. Everyone is fighting to be the bestest boy. Well, uh, tr- really six people matter, right? The two Seekers and the four Beaters. beaters? I guess, But yeah. why would you use the Beaters towards the Catchers? What are they called? I don't fucking know. The Chasers? Sure. The, why would you have the Beaters play with the Chasers at all? Just beat the fucking Seekers into the ground. That there's no incentive in Quidditch for the beaters to do anything but chase the seekers around and try Except and murder mortally them. Mortally wound the. But there's no incentive in the game for you to do anything else. Maybe there's a rule that it's like bullying if Maybe. you only go out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, red flag for bullying. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> Seems accurate to me. I don't know. I don't see a problem with it. <laughs> Both of the Irish beaters have been taken out of the game for bullying. This <laughs> happens every single game. <laughs> yeah. It's worth the flag, but like, you know. I just, I don't think about sports as affecting my daily life ever in my whole life in the slightest. And so when things don't have sports in them, it does not feel weird to me. It, it, yes, I understand because you don't like sports on an individual level, mm-hmm. but on a societal level, there there is an important function in things that make us gather, right? Whether it be theater, sports, theater and sports are the same thing, mm-hmm. right? Uh, go, we went to a play yesterday. Except you're not hoping somebody loses. It's the same thing as going like, to a sport, right? It, I, it is it is functionally different is, mindset, but yeah. It is. It does not matter. It is the gathering of people and community building, mm-hmm. and we. Well, the Lord Ruler's sports were the executions of the sky that he just did every once in a while to keep people in line. You know, everybody gathered for those mandatory attendance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My sport is murder. Uh, Johnny Coleman, thank you for that super chat. The snitch goes slower the larger the score gap. Is that true? That's not true. That can't be true. Look, I, look, I, yeah, fuck J.K. Rowling, but I have read Harry Potter, like, uh, like, hundreds of times, if you count listening to the audiobooks. Mm-hmm. I don't believe that is ever mentioned, unless it's in a, like, thing, unless it's a retcon, because she did a lot of that, where she, like, retconned it in later. My favorite thing about Harry Potter is that every single element of the world building makes no sense if you think about it. Yeah, don't think about the, it. The, the, Brennan Lee Mulligan talking about owls being nature's slowest bird is one of the funniest like takedowns of an entire like world building system look you can be slow but reliable it's like the tortoise yeah. uh okay wait wait, wait but, but dumbledore was definitely gay the whole time johnny okay johnny i hear you i hear you yeah, yeah. anyway yeah. what a what a wild you can all teleport system. but you send your mail using nature's slowest bird <laughs> is one of the funniest <laughs> it's just one of the funniest like Pigwidget is very fast okay no, he's just Very ADHD. Fast. He's annoying, but he's not fast. Wow, ADHD equals annoying. Yeah, it just cracks me up. <laughs> no, I, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. To fanis <sighs> gets it. Sports and society functions as a cathartic release for the masses. Yes. And for people who are mentally the Lord Ruler is really able into to edging. find cathartic release without joining in with other people, for introverts, sports don't have a lot of function. But for extroverts, sports are a very important part of 
the health of society. The Lord Ruler is obsessed with edging. No one sure. gets to release. Yeah. 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 Um. Anyway. We are talking about um, Hero of Ages. Uh, are we? Which is says it. We're almost done. We're gonna. We're gonna. We're be doing fine. okay. We're doing okay. We only have six chapters left. Uh, so yeah, they're going to the ball. The prince is having a ball. The yes. prince is having a ball. This is my favorite. Seized goes to Erto, uh, accompanied by his team, and he's like, "Hey, I am here to to talk to you." And Quellian's like, "Fuck you, get the fuck out of the city." And Seized's like, "But what if we stayed though?" And he's like, "Yeah, okay, that's fine." Well, I love that. Like Quellian is like, "Yeah, well, the the survivor uh, wants us to murder all the nobles. We're just doing what he told us." And Seized's like. Actually, you know what? You're kind of right. He did say that a lot. He did say that. Kelsier did bring up murdering the nobles f- frequently. Like, you're not, like, wrong, so I'm but, not going to argue with you. Damn it. Yeah. But, oh. damn. Uh, Breeze... I also love that Quellian is like, if he had sent a noble, they would have just murdered him. And I was like, okay. Yeah. All right. Good thing they sent Seized. And let's really hope they don't find out that Breeze and Ariane are nobles. Wow. Well, they're not, like, le- they, they know that. No, they don't know that Breeze is. Oh, yeah, they literally are like, he's an Alamancer. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, but they don't know that he's like a first generation noble. Uh, yeah, nobody really knows he that. He was born noble. Even Seiza doesn't know that, right? Yeah. Um, no, and then so Breeze, yes, yeah, soothes him, and he's like, oh, this is the soother. Fuck this guy. And Breeze is like, ooh, did I make you say that? And Quillian's like, wait, did you, wait, did I, wait a did second. you, oh, God, oh, no. Oh, no. I can't trust myself. It's just hilarious because, like, he's also an Alamancer. So, like, this is such, like, I know, he's such a fucking I need, like, some POV with the citizen, because I'm like, how how are you getting around your hypocrisy? Yeah, I would love to know. Although a lot of leaders are absolute hypocrites, so. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, I love that for us. Um, Society we live in. Yeah. Um, And so uh, they're trying to figure out where they're going to live here, and they run into Lesta Bornis, uh, who's like, hey, I have a place to live. We're going to live... Uh, in in an underground lake. Canton of Inquisition. And they're like, wait, this is where all the water went. Yeah, because the canals had dried up in the city this like a hundred years ago. Very cool. Love this reveal. I was like, there's got to be a reason for it, but yeah. I was like, I don't know enough about sciencey shit to no, know. No, rivers don't just fucking disappear. No. Nah. But if you spend a thousand years digging a big hole underground... Suddenly, rivers start to disappear. Rivers with no ash in them. Yeah. Dope. This reveal fucking rocked. Well, because the ash is starting to, like, clog the canals and stuff. There's yeah. no one to fish it out, to, to move it. Um, and it's falling so much faster now yeah. that the microbes can't digest it and break it down. Um, so they're all just basically going to drown in ash. Or the mists are going to kill them. Whatever happens first. They're going to die either from starvation, yeah. suffocation, no breathing. This <laughs> is my last resort! Um, Ash Ketchum will be the end of this world, uh, just as I foretold when I first saw Pokemon and was like, he's really the villain of this series. He is the hero he of He is Asia. kidnapping animals from their homes and, and making them, them fight. To fight, yeah. Crazy. Um, <laughs> God, I love Pokemon so much and it's so dark. Such a Chapter 30! Mm-hmm. Ellen is like, hey, we're going to go to a ball. And everyone's like, yeah, that makes sense. The more that we say Ellen, all I can think of is Ellen! 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 Do you know what that's from? The Discovery Channel thingy. The the, the little um What? The uh the the little meerkats. They're like Alan Oh. Yeah, this is a YouTube video. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's so funny. That I don't think that's where most people think that joke is from. What do you mean? That's why? <laughs> Because it's... Steve! Like, that's... Oh, yeah. When you go, Alan, most, I think most people would say Jurassic Park 3. Why? Because of the moment at the end of Jurassic Park 3. The dream sequence. It's amazing. When did Jurassic Park 3 come out? 1990... Oh, before YouTube. Six or seven? Okay. So someone took, like, a like National Geographic thingy and put that over top no, of it? No, you're thinking about a different thing. But Alan is, it's, oh, come on, 2001, still six years before YouTube, but um, that's so funny. See, chat knows what I'm talking about. When you said Alan, I immediately went to Jurassic Park 3. Alan, Alan, no, no, that's, that's Steve. Steve, Steve. You never, yeah? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, okay. no, I've seen that video. Okay. But when people go, Alan, I immediately think of the Velociraptor that talks. Daytime. Because it's such a shocking... Nighttime. It's a shocking moment in that movie. Sure, yeah, that sounds very shocking. Yeah. I've only seen the first one. Spoilers! Yeah. You, oh, please. You just spoiled Jurassic Park 3. It's Prowlers. not a good movie. <laughs> Wow. Unfortunately. Jurassic Park 1 and 2 are both great. I love them both. I don't like Jurassic Park 3 as much. And honestly, Jurassic Park 2 is not... It, it, it is diminishing returns, those first three. Um, although Jeff Goldblum's uh, gymnastic daughter kicking the Velociraptor out the window is amazing. Uh, it is it's just an insane... It's an insane moment that, that shouldn't insane. exist in a movie but does, and I'm so glad that it does. That sounds insane. Um, uh, Arizu, thank you for that super chat. Yeah, so they go You're to a welcome. ball. Um... Uh, Vin has a little bit of a hard time uh, managing her trajectory. Uh, we love your lack of pop culture knowledge. Uh, I live to give. We uh, they she has a hard time with all of her petticoats, uh, but she did manage to find someone to make her a dress in like a week, which is very impressive. It's a I don't think beautiful dress. Uh, <laughs> as as the saying goes, uh, nine women can't make a baby in a month, and so it's very what? impressive that they were able to put this together. Nine women can't make a baby in a month. Yeah. Have you never heard that before? No. Oh, and all your time in theater, you've never had a wardrobe person in front of you go, nine women can't make a baby in a month? No, I have no idea what that even means. Basically, it's it's something that is uh, in like the fashion world where you're like, I need you to make, it just hire more seamstresses to make this dress faster. Oh. And oh, it's the okay. idea that like, it, it, no matter what, you, you still need a, one woman to make the baby over nine months. Nine women can't each take one month and right. make the baby in a month. Okay, 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 okay. I, I was like, what the fuck does yeah. that mean? Throwing more people at a problem doesn't always make it faster. Too many cooks in the kitchen. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, um, gotcha. it's a, it's, a, it's a saying that I've known my whole life, but that recently came back into my life because uh, Taliesin says it a lot in Campaign to a Critical Role, uh, uh, and I find it very funny. Gotcha. Um, That's fun. Campaign to a Critical Role, very good. I'm almost at the end, and I'm very sad about it, um, but then I get to watch Campaign 3, so it's fine. So it's great. Everything um, is awesome. No, I, I'm gonna be. It's gonna be hard to say goodbye to these characters. You're gonna weep, and I'm gonna just come down and film it. Like at the end of campaign one, when I was just sobbing. Oh my god. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. 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 Fancy dress making is very unrealistic. Like there's a whole handmade silk gown in two days. Yeah. No. Fuck no. People don't understand how long it takes. Um, but then also, like I've seen cosplayers be like, I had 24 hours, and this is what I made, and I'm like, fucking how. Jessica Negri, what is wrong with you? I don't know how she I does it. I adore you, but... yeah. I do, I do not know. Yeah. Um, there's something wrong with her. It's something wrong that has made her very rich, but there's something wrong with her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, they go to the ball. The prince is having a ball. Um, uh, and so Vin is like... Vin does the woman equivalent of uh, walking up to the biggest guy in the prison yard and punching him in the face. Yeah. Which is walking up and just, like, humiliating fighting fucking Lady Patterson. Yeah. And being like, wait, Patterson, are, are you related to uh, Shanaria? Oh, I killed her. That was fun. It was a good... You know what? Good fight. It was a good fight. Good fight. Yeah. But, uh... You see Ellen? Yeah, they were engaged. And, yeah. and I murdered her and, and then now married him. <laughs> I'm the empress. And she's like, oh. And I'm also... Oh, oh my God, um, what is this? That's my wedding ring. The hero of ages? <laughs> Gosh, wow. I've been busy. Yeah, they announced themselves so fucking pompously. <laughs> I love this scene so much. Well, and so we were talking early in the week where I was like, hey, like, I really want to love this book. Yeah. But one of the things that I think kept book two from being as good as book one to me mm -hmm. was that book two didn't have a lot of balance in terms of lighter moments with all the darkness. Because mm -hmm. the series is getting darker and darker as it goes on. And I was like... The stakes! I, I hope that book three manages to find some time to have some levity to break up the tone of the book a little bit, right? Yeah. And this scene was a perfect scene mm -hmm. because it brought some of what I loved about book one, which is that the world is dark, but human beings are able to have good moments in dark times. I also think that um, a little bit of that was in the conversation with Slow Swift. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Like, there was some levity there as well, which I, I yeah, and I really And the joke, the, the Ellen joke of being like, yeah, you killed everyone, but I love you. Like... The, yeah. This book is managing, I think, the balance between having some levity and some lightness, but mm -hmm. the world being dark and awful things happening. Yeah. Because I made the title of this, Everything is Terrible, because it is. But also, this book, I think, better than book two at the same point, has a little bit more of a light air to it. Yeah. That I was missing a little bit in book two. Um, and I think that... Uh, 
that, that that is the strength of the scene. I think that it brings out human beings are so good at having good moments, no matter how bad things get. Yeah. And I think that it's an important part of a, a novel, especially novels as long as these. Yeah. To have moments where it isn't just constantly leaning into how bad things are. Yeah, definitely. Um, and this this was great. I, I think this everything that plays out in the party scene I think is fantastic. Mm-hmm. I think the conversation between the Patterson, the way that Vin like pulls those girls away and then kind of gets caught up in the fun of having a gaggle of girls with her. Yeah, it's like I never had this even at the beginning, and like really, really learns to accept that she can have like there's more to her. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that it, that that she's allowed. To yeah. like these things and enjoy that. We saw like the beginnings of that, the buddings of that, I think in book one, and then shit just got so bad yeah. that she was like, I have to protect Ellen at all costs. Like, this isn't about me anymore. Um, and it's like, oh no, like, I am good at some of these things. I enjoy some of these things. Yeah. And that is absolutely okay. And I need to learn to accept that. And she also has that same conversation with Ellen of like, you can be who you have to be, you know, to be the emperor, but, like, don't lose those pieces of you that still make up who you are. Like, all of that can be ellen Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. In, in, a, in a really beautiful way. John yeah. Schmidt says these are so long. This is not a, this is not, a, this, this is not a short book. These are no, so short. Oh, yeah. This is a long this, book. I wouldn't call this short. This is a 700-page novel. I understand Brandon Sanderson writes longer books than this. But this is sure. a 700-page book. Like, this is a long yeah. novel. In terms of books. Like... Um, this, it, it, uh, the, the, the one thing I think that holds Well of Ascension back for me a little bit is that it just is a little bit too caught up in its own dourness. Hmm. And I think that the, all three of these books are very dark, right? Bad things happen in all of them. The world is very dark. But the, the tone of the first book and this one feel a little bit more like they find each other with a little bit more balance. It's yeah. short-ish. It's 700 pages. I understand Look, the, I, that you read books that are longer. This yeah. is not a short book. Yeah, just because longer books exist doesn't make this a short book. That's that's not... Like, that, that's not how I'm that not works. I'm not good at math, but that math ain't math. Like, a 300-page novel is a typical novel size. Brandon Sanderson is just an outlier. You can say short for Brandon Sanderson. You can't yeah. say short. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is It is definitely a, like... Just because it's not the Way size. of Kings doesn't mean it's a short book. Exactly. Yeah. I think Way of Kings might be an eight split. I'm not going to lie. An eight split. God damn. Well, I feel like even this split was too long. I feel like we, we, we had to rush through talking about some things today and... Yeah, something to keep in mind. Yeah, I think we might go back to five and six splits. I know that we want to get through Cosmere and I get all that, but I almost feel like we're rushing Hero of Ages a little bit. Yeah, there was a lot in this first section. Yeah. I, I don't think we'll be as rushed in the other two, but it's also about finding a good place to stop, like like that is narratively satisfying for us. So yeah, I don't know. It's it is a tough it is a tough balance. Arzu says he wrote a three hundred page book and called it a novella. Yeah, I'm Brandon Sanderson shocked. is in a different category of novelist. Yeah, yeah, but this is a long book, and I I think that when you find I think the problem with well of ascension not the problem because it, it it's I think it's still a very good book and I really liked it. But I think that um, the middle section where some of the levity is found in Brandon Sanderson's writing is so caught up in Zane's bullshit. Yeah. That that Zane is the distraction, but he's in the tone of the darkness. And so this this was just great. I anyway, all that to say, I, I really like the way this book is starting out. Um, and we spend some time over with uh, the people up in Urto, uh, where we basically just get a lot of information about the underground lake and um, says that and uh, Lester Bornis have a conversation about how. Kelsier's looking over them. Yeah. And Seiza really goes hard on the not being religious anymore. Yeah. Um, um, but it has, like, a different, like, interaction with Lestabornis. Yeah. Because Lestabornis is not trying to, like, convince him of anything otherwise. Yeah. But it's just kind of like, oh, it's because of Tindwill, isn't it? Yeah. And Seiza is like... You're just doing what Tindwill would have wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Seiza is like, what the fuck? I love that line so much. I love Yeah. I love this moment of showing that Lesta Bornis can see the not physical really well too. Yes. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He he has a blunt way of looking at the world and it allows him to give Seiza a, a, a piece of thought that none of the people who are closer to Seiza were able to do, right? He provided him with an alternate perspective, and I think that it was a really good scene. Yeah. 
Chapter 32, we get to the end of the ball. Um, the uh, conversation with Yeoman and Ellen does not go great. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't, doesn't go great. They're, like, so close to being on the same page, but they're, like, almost like people that are, like, too similar to, like, get along in a yeah. sense. Um, right? Like, and, and, and Ellen realizes, like, which parts of him to, like... Um, emphasize with with different people right this like philosophical side uh, uh, that ellen is actually very good at yeah Mm -hmm. it hasn't really been uh, like his strongest suit in conversations with other people but here it comes in clutch because they're able to to relate to one another on a similar level as opposed to yaman just thinking that he's like a you know pompous whatever yeah um, but they actually, they understand each other in a similar sense. And they're like, well, you know, don't quote this person. If you're going to make this point, you should quote this philosopher or whatever. Um, in a way that I found very entertaining to read. Cause I was like, I don't know what the fuck any of this means, but I am here for it. Uh, so Yeoman is like, you killed my God, get the fuck out of my city. Yeah. And Alan is like, okay, but first, and he grabs Vin. He goes over, he's like, sorry, I'm very rude. I'm going to take her. Which is uh, the exact right thing to do, boys. Mm-hmm. Take your lady for a dance at a ball. Yeah. Uh, and then he takes her over to dance, and then he pulls out a book because Ellen is a fucking troll, uh, and is uh, is a YouTube chatter for sure. <laughs> fucking little troll. Yeah. And uh, Vin is pissed momentarily, like yeah. all good wives would be. But then they dance, and it's very sweet. This was a beautiful moment. Yeah, I'm glad they got to have this. Especially because their wedding was so... um, Vin was dying in the last book. Uh, Them having this nice moment at a party a year later is nice. Yeah. They need a vow renewal party so bad. They need a honeymoon? But uh, we'll get to that once, you know, the world is saved. If they survive. I I have a feeling one of them doesn't make it out of the book, but... I know. Yeah. Especially because, like, we know that, like, the next, like series is not it, it's it's different like yeah I'm, yeah I'm i'm worried that they don't get the happy ending we'll see uh and so they flee and they make a big dramatic exit where they like jump over everybody and as as ellen is flying over the crowd he's like by the way if you want to leave the city my army will let you pass for safely goodbye bye have a good night goodbye yeah. goodbye <laughs> goodbye and then they uh, flee into the night yeah it's great um, this is chapter 33, the final chapter. We get the Hemalurgy is a ruin. It destroys, uh, which is interesting, which is why I think that the spike in Zane is how he was able to talk to Ruin and why I think Kelsier is Ruin, the the one that Les Bourne sees. Yeah. Uh, but then we get the, um, we get the escape, which we already talked about, so. Oh, yes, we did cover yeah. that earlier. Which I do like moment. that he shatters Conpar's bones on the way out. Yeah, he's like, you idiot, having this, like, crystal body, like, get wrecked. So before we get into high-low, Clarice, I gotta ask, if you had a true body, what would you want it made out of? I don't understand what a true body is, to be honest. What do you, what do you mean? I don't know what a true body is. So basically, the, the, the chondra are translucent when they're in their natural state. Yeah. And so they build fake bones uh-huh. out of beautiful things, and then they wrap their chondra goo around it so you can see through the chondra goo to the beautiful bones underneath so they're making their bones out of like rubies and sapphires and crystals and they're making these like gorgeous like skeletal structures that are then um what they wrap but their muscle around milan was like made of totally like wood yeah because she chose something more natural to buck the traditions of the older generations but how is like and hers is like decidedly not natural inhuman yeah yeah so, like, older generations look more like um, robots, basically. They look like automatons. And then she looks more like a, like, woodland spirit. So, like, as long as it's a naturally occurring substance, it's a true body that you can make your bones No, in? No, no, you can make them out of anything. You just have to have somebody make the bones in bone shape so that they can create a body. So, do the Chondra then have, like, people who, like, make bones? Yep. That, that Yep, they brought them up in the book. I don't remember that. There are artisans that make beautiful bodies for people. Right. You did do the reading, right? <laughs> yes, I just, the true body thing, I did not understand. I'm not gonna lie. Um, Milan is cosplaying as an ent. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I, I... She skimmed. 
Don't say that. People will quit their Patreon subscriptions. Yeah, no, it, it, the true body thing very much, like, confused me. I, like, I'm, I, I don't know. Like, could you make a true body out of, like, blood? Probably not. It wouldn't be hard. You would need, like, sir, a, you could need... But, like, blood hardens. <laughs> it dries like, out. Not that much, though. You could, like, fill something with blood and have, like, blood bones, sure. If you, like, made glass blood bones. That would be wild. Yeah. Um. You don't have, like, a favorite substance you would want your body to be made out of? Something beautiful? Favorite substance? <laughs> I don't like know. Like jade, like have like like a, a, a mint green. Salt. <laughs> have like mint green bones. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I I guess if I got to like pick something that I thought was like pretty, yeah, I'd probably pick something sparkly. Okay. Why? What would you pick? Pokemon cards. I would be worth so much money. But, so you'd only use the like foil cards? So it would no, be I think, I think that I, I don't know. I think that I would like <gasps> D20s. You know, you know that D20 we saw at Dragon World yesterday? That is the D20 made out of, made dice. Out of dice. I would have like bones that are like resin bones that are filled with D20s. And so I just, or all just like dice. And so I would just look like Wait, bone dice. Wait, they made dice. bones. So they're all basically like Wolverine. Yeah, kind of. Interesting. Did you just like read through it and be like, I don't get this. I'm moving on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, I literally was like, I don't understand what, what like, counts as a true body. Um, it's basically just fake bones so that they're not wearing real bones in the Condra homeland. Okay, but they're, like, bones that are just, they're in the shape of bones, like human yes. bones. Yes. Because... To give them something to move around with. Is it the whole, like, the image of made, God created man in the image of himself kind yes. of deal? Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Um, Yeah, I don't know. I honestly, I'd probably be really fucking lame. And yeah, I would pick some kind of gemstone. Sweet and Savory pretty... would pick Legos, which would mean no one would ever step on you, which is sad because uh, don't you just want hot ladies to step on you? That's very sad. Yeah. What if Stella didn't step on people? Sad world. That would be a worse world. Nobody knows sure. who we're talking about. Uh, if you uh, want, you can stick around. We're about to High Low. High Low is a game we play where when I was a family, what? When I was a family. <laughs> When my family was uh, <laughs> newly blended, uh, we would go. <laughs> we would go uh, to the dinner table and we'd play high low, where we would say our highs to commiserate over them. No, celebrate our, each other's highs. Commis what is happening in my brain? We would celebrate each other's highs and commiserate over each other's lows, so that we could get a little bit closer. And so to get closer to you, we do our high low. Clarus does her high. I do my low. She does her low. I do my high, so we can mm -hmm. compliment sandwich this bitch. Hell yeah, Clarus, what is your high? For the first third, well, the first half of Hero Pages. My high is uh, the ballroom scene. Um, Would you say it was a ballroom blitz? It was a ballroom blitz. Uh, yes, correct. Yeah. Uh, very fun. I loved, the, like you said, the levity that it brought. I love what it meant for our characters. I love that they got to have the first dance. I love that, like, Vin comes over and, like you said, the equivalent of, like, punches the biggest person in the room. Mm -hmm. um, and all of the, like, women are like, Empress, Empress. And she's like, oh, wow, this is weird, but kind of like it. Um, yeah. I loved everything about that scene. I, I even, including the conversation with Ellen and... Um, What's this? Yaman. Um, uh, yeah, that that whole scene, my favorite part to read, hands yeah. down. With an honorary mention being like Tensoon, I love as a character. And so yeah. I'm so excited to see how that all unfolds. Yeah. What about uh, your low? My low is that one sentence I brought up about Ellen where he's like, the Lord Ruler wasn't evil. And I'm like, guys, we need to stop with the like s the people who create and enforce systems of slavery aren't evil because they are. Uh, slavery is an evil institution and the people who create it and enforce it are themselves evil. Mm -hmm. uh, I will die on this hill and if you want to cancel me for thinking that slavery is bad, go for, go it. for it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I Yeah, please. Please cancel me. I guess. Cancelled. Somewhere Ben Shapiro is working up a really mediocre argument. Uh, <laughs> what's your low? Yeah, he's watching our stuff. Um, my low. This, this podcast is actually fantasy to him because we talk about women enjoying sex and that doesn't exist. That in doesn't exist. Yeah. yeah. He's like, no, no, this has to be fantasy. Women don't get wet. No. The craziest thing. Uh, yeah. Anyway. What, so what were you saying? Craziest thing anyone What's has your low? ever said. My low. 
And why is it Ben Shapiro's sex life? Sorry. That is my low, actually, yes. Um, Because that's just unfortunate. I, fuck, I don't know. I don't know what my low is. (laughs) My low is... I don't know. I do love that you never once think about these things before. You wait until, like, we've been doing this segment for two and a half years. Mm -hmm. And at no point have you ever pre-planned them out. So you just sit here and kind of waffle. Yeah, I pick in the moment. I, I, I do not plan. Jess plus infinity. Thank you for that super chat. Great book club as always, and perfect time for me. As Dune Two is about to start, you've thank been you. Go doomed. Have fun. Go have fun. Have the best time. Thank you for that. Super Lisa Nalgaib. Chat. Um. Enjoy it. It's pretty great. My low is actually that like Brandon Sanderson stealing the abilities of of lesser authors is like just oh, really unfortunate. Because yeah. you know other people should be able to to write books as well, but um. Brandon Sanderson just stealing them all. Uh, that's why he can write so many books. It's yeah. crazy. What is your high? Um, Sonambular saying, why can't I drop the prime on Twitch? I don't know, Sonambular. I'll try and figure that out. Uh, my high, thank you for the, oh, because you have to follow first. Uh, thank you for the follow, Sonambular, over on Twitch. We do re- we do stream this over on Twitch as well. Uh, my True. high is that tomorrow I get to play Dragonlance. Uh, a D and D actual no, play the... <laughs> with uh, my friends. I'm plugging first. Give me a second. I'll get that's to my fair, high. That's fair. Plug. I'm trying to keep them. Uh, plug away. Plug, plug away. They're they're. I'm edging them for the the fucking um, reveal of my high, and so I'm trying to keep them around. Of course. Uh, Dragonlance comes back tomorrow, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Harvest is currently unconscious after the fall of Vogler, and we will see what happens in the game. It's going to be a fun one. Uh, please. Yeah. Be there. Yeah. Uh, it's be fun. My high. I think, um, I, no, it, it, it is the party, right? I think the party scene is the best scene, but you took that. So I'm trying to think of something else that was also wonderful. Mm, okay. Okay. I really like the Breeze says that conversations. I think that put, putting the two of them as just, just okay. generally, I think putting the two of them as like scene partners in a way that like, We've never gotten to see them do that. Mm-hmm. I think it was a really smart choice, yeah. and it works out really well in this book. Mm-hmm. I think that they bring very interesting perspectives to each other's problems, and um, I, I just I really enjoyed watching the two of them play off of each other. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I'm gonna go with that. I think that it was an unexpected pairing that I really, really think works. Yeah, I, I no, I, I agree. I think it was a smart choice. Yeah. Um, James Ross, this dress is from For Love and Lemons. Um, I did get it a few years ago, though, but they have cute things. You could definitely find cover-ups on there. Highly recommend. If you like the video, like, subscribe to the channel. If you don't, hit the dislike button. Leave me in comments down below because the algorithm god is hungry and we must feed her. Mm -hmm, This mm -hmm. episode, that algorithm goddess is... I'm going to say Vin because you got to go back to the balls. Yeah, fair. She made it all the way to the balls, kids. She made it, guys. Uh, Your marriage in, she finally got to the balls. Ellen is hung like a Jesus sewer Christ. pipe. Um, if you want to follow us on the internet, you can. I'm at Nerdy Nightly. I'm at Clarice Polaris. Please give this podcast five stars wherever you are listening. Apple Podcasts, Spotify. It is the best way to help us grow. Find more book club clubbers to listen to our Cosmere experience. Yes. This is going to be many years of Cosmere. Because religion of Brandon Sanderson. Brandon Sanderson writes books faster than we can cover them. So we'll be doing this for a while. For a if... long time. Yeah. <laughs> um, before you go, though, we're about to do Smut Corner. And if those of you who leave for Smut Corner, understandable. But before you go, can you go give a video a like and the view? Yes. That let's try. Oh, be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, guys, that guys. That would guys, be guys, much guys, guys. appreciated. Don't go anywhere. Ladies, gents, Pause. and non-binary ends. Um, um, we're going to drop a link in the we're chat. We're going to drop a link in the chat if you could like a video for us. Yeah, it's our level ups for Dragonlance tomorrow. Uh, mm. We're trying to get some some love on that channel. So we're just going to drop a link. Uh, let it run in the background if you're not watching the Dragonlance campaign. But uh, give it give it some give it some love, you know, for the algorithm. Gods and goddesses. Uh, a like goes a long way. It does. It it actually it really really does. Yeah. So any anything very much appreciated. Uh, we love you guys. Um, now we'll get into Smut Corner. Now Smut you may leave. Smut Corner Canada. Why buy a mattress anywhere else? Ding. Ding. <laughs> so we the, we talked so about here's so the much problem about Smut Corner. Okay, is that we the podcast has slowly devolved back into, into the Smut entirety Corner. of it being Smut Corner. I know, I and know. I feel like we're losing the segment a little bit. 
Because where would you add a sex scene that we didn't already talk about someone being penetrated? Well, the problem is people are constantly being penetrated. And that There's is Brandon so Sanderson's much penetration. fault. Yeah. You know, it's a, a Mormon who's obsessed with penetration, which, like, fair, I, I get it. Um, yeah. You know. Yeah. There's there's a, there's a lot to unpack yeah. over there. Um. But you know what? You know what? Vin and Ellen finally had their dance. So mm-hmm. they, you know, they, they had a great night. You know who got fucked got this home. week? Audible by Brandon Sanderson. And I am so grateful. Fuck the bullshit at Audible. And thank you, Brandon Sanderson, for fucking them. I don't Just know going what you're talking about. Balls deep. He took on ball, Audible's, like, bad practices. And he won. And oh, I love Oh, let's fucking go. Yeah. Okay. We need more lady on lady action. Arzu, there are no women in these books. There are two, and what? they are both in committed relationships. Yeah, so. Yeah. So they're not open. Noble and so they shouldn't people, cheat. noble people aren't monogamous. Clearly. Don't cheat. <laughs> if you're in an open relationship, do it. It's fun. Open we don't relationships know. are great. They have not talked about monogamy. It is. It is an assumption you are making. Fair. You know what? That's fair. Vin and Orian are best friends, right? They went dress shopping together. Sonambular, thank you for subscribing on Twitch. With that Prime, let's go. Dropping that you. Prime. If you do have a Prime it. subscription, if you guys have Amazon Prime but you don't watch Twitch, come over to our Twitch channel and just drop your Prime. Just give it. It just it's it's money Free that money. you don't spend but that we get. If yeah. you, like the best way to support us without having to spend a dime is to give just us your give Prime. Give us Daddy Bezos. The allowance. best way to support us without spending a dime is to come to Twitch and give us your Prime. Nailed that's it. that's a fucking. It's a beautiful jingle. Well done. Yeah. 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 No, I'm, I'm here for it. You're... But don't forget that you have to do that every month. Um, You can't set it recurring. Don't That's... Do it every month. Yeah. Min was being dressed by a lot of seamstresses. Se- you don't know that Seas- they were seamstresses. You don't know that they were women. They're not They're not mentioned. That is true. Could this, be series, this series could use some more female characters. It is very male heavy. Yeah. That I is will... a criticism of it. Um, I, I will agree with that. I think that like having Alrian there uh, was a was a great step forward in that, but she doesn't do a lot. She's kind of just present. Um, she at least has a personality. Beldir yeah. is just hot. And well, we sad. don't know her yet. I know, but right now, but I mean, right now she's just hot and sad. Yeah. Um, and being lusted after, and so uh, yeah, this year's gonna be more women. But other than that, um, mm-hmm. Korish one has subscribed. We have two subscribers on Twitch. Hell, Thank you yeah, so yeah. much. Uh, dropping a prime. Let's, oh my god, I'm so primed and ready now. Give us now. your daddy Bezos allowance, thank you. How um, do you think Les Born is jacks off? Very carefully. Because <laughs> now he's a tin eye and a pewter arm. Like, very, very carefully. He doesn't even touch his penis, he just like rubs his inner thighs. He like, breathes on it. The like, cool breeze. He cannot wear a kilt. Kilt? No. Les Bornis enjoys actual blowjobs, where he just blows. He's like, oh god. And the air. <laughs> That's enough. That's that is absolutely more than enough. Lesta Bornis is the definition of needing just the tip. Here's the thing, Lesta Bornis can't watch porn. Why? Because he can't see anything. Like I don't know if you, if you'd be able to like He sees everything. Well, he's got the like Lesta Bornis Lesta Bornis can watch porn from one apartment building looking across a highway. He just watches <laughs> porn. Oh my god, we got a hype train over on Sure Sure, boss. No way, we're hype training right now because of the Hell Prime yeah. Gaming subscriptions. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you, guys. We'll happily take your Prime. For the next four minutes and 41 seconds, we are on a level one hype train. Choo-choo. Let's fucking go. Hell yeah, let's go. Y'all, that's too sweet. <laughs> appreciate you it. You are too sweet. We appreciate it. Um, We need to bring up Prime Gaming subscriptions more often, apparently. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was a great plug. Um, do you think that ruin and preservation get dirty? No. No. No, they can't touch each other, or else the universe would come to an end. <laughs> it would. It would like be the the devastation of everything if those two things were to. But no, it would only be half the devastation of everything because preservation is also present. So it's like a fifty fifty chance when I think they get they would, together. I think they would cancel each other out, and the world would come to an end. But then it would just be, then ruin would win. Then it would all be ruined. Like, I think that if God and the devil shook hands, uh-huh. then the fiddler from Georgia would win. <laughs> right? I think that's how that the works. The devil's in the house of the rising sun. Like, what? The devil went down to Georgia. Went to sure. have himself a time. 
Actually, the devil went down to the Well of Ascension. No, yeah. I couldn't get in. <laughs> yeah, the bouncer was like, nah, I need your ID. He's like, I'm, I'm 8,000 years old. But I don't have fucking ID. They don't have identification. I'm the devil. And then David Tennant is like, oh, ho, ho. I'm British. Because he's one of the demons in Good Omens. Oh, because he's, he's like, the he's like snake. in the devil, but he's like an anti-devil. Crawly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Good, good pull. We need to finish season two. All right. This has been fun. Thank you. Smut Corner was a little weird. We mostly talked about Lesta Born is coming. But God, isn't that what this show is? Lesta Born is coming? Sure. <laughs> Lester Bornis is the hero of ages. Load bolts. Thank Load you for bolts. using your prime. Thank we you so have much. a successful hype train. We love a successful hype train. Thank what a way to that. end. What a way to end the first hero of ages. Um, was Chat? the memes about me not knowing about the bacteria the fucking surprise you guys talked about in my stream last night? Was that it? Was it just for the memes? Were you guys just? Is it just the memes? Was my surprise memes? Yes. Oh, you fuckers. You fucking fuckers. I don't get it. You fucking... All right. Well, should we find someone to raid on Twitch? Oh, yeah. Should we be good little boys and girls? We're supposed to do that over on Twitch. Um, the devil yes. went down to Georgia. All right. Let's find someone to raid. Just raid someone doing like D&D. &D. And then... Um, I don't know. Yeah. Who do we... Who do you guys want to raid? Let's end the podcast. Bye, podcast people. See Goodbye. you later. Bye. See you. All right. All right. No, now no. we're just live. Now we're just live. We're now not we're recording. Guys. Now we're just live. The podcast doesn't get to know what happened. Yes. This is this we is non-podcasted. <laughs> um. Okay. We're gonna uh, raid. Uh. Somebody. Who's playing? Is this live or is this a rerun? No, we don't want to. We don't want to do a rerun. We're not raiding Critical Role. <laughs> Why? <laughs> we're doing it live, kids. We're doing it live. You'd like go into like the. Read the memes live? Oh god, no. That's too much. We'll be here all day. Yeah. This is this is the secret stream. Secret. Secret stream. Oh, what's a raid? Yeah, Arzu, that's for Twitch only. It's for Twitch only. You basically only. take everybody who's in your Twitch and you take it over to somebody else's Twitch. We're gonna go raid somebody. Just go to the the Dungeon and Dragons thing. Oh, and just raid a Dungeon and Dragons game? Yeah. Alright. See who's playing, other than Critical Role, obviously. <laughs> Don't say anything you might forget later. You won't have a video. F oh, true, 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 true. No reminders for me here because I'm never going to know what I've said in this section of Should the... we raid Dice Legends? Uh, sure. Dice Legends. Okay. Dice Legends. All right, y'all. Thank you for a great stream. This was so fun. Thank you for being here for Book Club. Hell As yeah. always, we adore you. We're going to go do the thing on Twitch. Um, if you're a Twitch person, uh, drop that prime. Join, drop that prime. Join the raid. It's a good old time. All right, here we go. We're 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 going. Secret novel, secret stream. What? Secret novel. I don't think we can cover the secret novel because I've heard even the setting of it is a spoiler. Yeah, so we're not gonna touch that. We'll touch it in like two years, so we're gonna be way behind y'all. But uh, thank you for a great stream. Do something nerdy tonight. Bye, friends. Uh, and let's go on a raid.